bitch, I'm out of my own sequel Two-faced people all around, they be evil 2021, you can never trust nobody Good and bad thoughts on my mind, they be crowded Push a nigga past his limits, then you see he bought it Family work hard, but I never catch them frowning Came a long way, in my dream now, be drowning Niggas stay dying, I hear got some hearts pounded Multi-talented, my passion, I haven't found it Yeah, in my home, I was never ever doubted Coming from a bad place, oh yeah Tryna be a better me just for you But it ain't easy, it's hard to get used to Money, my own business, I'm not worried about what he do Cause nowadays all the niggas that be seafood I always say this is that I'm staying around people Finding my own path like I'm riding my own sequel Two-faced people all around, they be evil 2021, you can never trust nobody Good and bad thoughts on my mind, they be crowded Push a nigga past his limits, then you see he bought it Family work hard, but I never catch them frowning Came a long way, in my dream now I be drowning Niggas stay dying, I hear got some hearts pounded Multi-talented, my passion, I haven't found it Yeah, in my home, I was never ever doubted Good evening to each and every one It's your boy GFC Govan Back with another video for you guys today Today is a day where we watch a few Premier League games and see the title change in um, in a different direction. Um, today is one of the days where we see Manchester City sitting two points clear of the, on top of the Premier League, where we see Arsenal and both Liverpool lost in the same day. So where do the Premier League title end up at the end of the season? Would it be Manchester City four in a row? Would it be Arsenal first for 20 years? Or would it be um, Liverpool, where Klopp, you know, on his farewell? Where would this title go at the end of the season? So let's get into it. Let's dig deep and we find out. You know, um, Aston Villa did, did a magnificent job against Arsenal, you know, best defensive team in, in, the, in the league. And um, they they dig they dig and they dig deep, and they end up come come away from the Emirate with a, with the three points. Leon Bailey, Jamaican international, the back of the net. Ollie Watkinson, one of my favorite striker target for the season. Um, those old Pochettino, they're watching, and to see Ollie Watkinson, you know, is 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 a guy that's on form. He's not only just scoring goals. He's doing a lot of assist too. So you have to give credit where credit due because not only the man is finding way to score, but he is finding way to assist. And he's up there amongst amongst uh, the, some of the best of, on, on the season as a striker, to be quite honest, with assists. So that to show you that um, you know, is he is a man on form. And he's a man on demand, to be quite honest. But as we go through the, the, the day, you know, um, Chelsea is our main topic, but because Chelsea play Everton tomorrow. But um, to see both Liverpool and Arsenal, you know, the way how they go down today, you know, that 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 kind of twist, twist everything wide open. To be quite honest, you know, right now City is the last is the last team to, to lead. You know, as they always said, like it's not the um, it's not the it's not who who led, it's who can finish. You know, and we see the um, the notorious Tash is in the building. I'm sorry, notorious Tash, about the game. I know that you you're really disappointed, but um, you know Liverpool will get the chance today to score at least five, you know. And if you rewatch the game, you will see like it was all in your guys' hand today, and you guys definitely threw it away. You know, um, Salah missed from close range. You know, Jata miss. You know, Nunes miss. Jones miss. That's like five. I'm not even counting the rest. So the it was in your hands today, you know, to at least jump above Manchester City and, and lead the race again. But you guys didn't capitalize on the opportunity that you guys get. And um unfortunate because you know Liverpool 
was my autonom favorite, to be quite honest. And because I didn't want City to win it, but I definitely don't want Arsenal to win it because of what um what me and Arsenal the rival, you know, the London, the the, the rights of who who rule London. And you know, London is blue for a long time now, almost 20 years. And I rather it to stay like that for right now because my team is in the mud. So my team is in the mud. So I rather Arsenal stay down there with me right now until I can at least compete again. Or I show some form where I can compete. Because as I said, Chelsea first, you know, and I don't mind if City win a four peat, even though I don't want it, because that's something that we cannot break, but that's something that I can live with. I definitely can live with it. But to give away the, the tiger for London, you know, to Arsenal, that will hurt more than anything else. So I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm not I'm not spitting on a man don't fall, you know. I'm just saying, like. You know, I'm I'm already in the gutter. So if you be in the gutter too, you know that's that's how it is. That's just the way it is. You know, things will never be the same. You know, if Arsenal wins, so that's just the way it is. And um, what a game! What a game! Weekend. You know, I see a lot of ties swing in Chelsea favor. Will Chelsea, you know, take advantage of um? these these um favorable moment you know that um that that's that really flow in their way because as i said earlier you know if you check the tiger brighton drop points wolves drop points you know um Bose mount drop points manchester united drop point west ham united drop point you know so it's just it's just up to us right now to go and do it. Will we do it? That's the next question. Because every week I said um, team drop points, and it's all time for us to 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 at least you know um, close some gaps and and um, drift away from the from the rest, and we still find a way out to stay right right in the middle. So I don't know I don't know what's really going on with us, you know, but. Hopefully that it um it can change tomorrow. I would love for it to change. You know, at least go one point behind um that would only put us one point behind um uh West uh West Ham West Ham you uh West Ham United. Uh, Ty was trying to call me back. Um yeah, so that would only put us one point behind West Ham United and three points behind um Manchester United and Newcastle with two games in it. So we definitely uh, we definitely see a path, but can we take the path? That's that's just the question. You know, can we take that path that is um that is right there in front of us? Because there there is a path for us. And if Arsenal continue on this on this on this journey where where they um if they lose on the weekend against Wolves. And the tackle is out of their hands, to be quite honest. I know they're going to be a dysfunction team there. So we can probably at least capitalize on it because right now the pressure is on Arsenal. When our pressure is on Arsenal, they tend not to think, think, think clearly. And you can say that they can be up for, for grabs. So depends on how their own Wolves games go, at least. You know, and then you know we're coming up against them um, next, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. We play Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-final over the weekend. So there's a lot of a lot of momentum can swing in our favor. But can I trust in this team to really capitalize on it? Because we haven't been capitalizing any moment or any opportunity that we get overall for um, so far this season. So. It's it's a question, you know, and it's a one that is hard to be answered because none of us know which Chelsea is gonna turn up against Everton. If we could have tell the Chelsea that's gonna turn up against Everton, then at least we will stand we will stand with a clear mind, but we cannot we cannot do it because we never can tell which Chelsea is or are 
gonna show and turned up. You know, um, as they said, sometimes Chelsea can be chart TFC, and which is true. You know, Everton lose points, and we will tend to just give them back that 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 two points that they lost. You know, because that's Chelsea. You know, um, I wish I can sit here and tell you guys that um, it's it's gonna be a bright day. You know, um, because we we definitely need to save ourselves at this point in time, like financial situation be hanging over us for the last two seasons you know it's time for us to to either to either step up or get stepped on you know so it's it's all it's all in our court you know so either we're gonna step up or get stepped on you know i don't know which one or which way we want to go with it but uh marin is joining me on the stream today bro it's a long time bro how you doing <laughs> How are you, brother? You're a long time, long time, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, you know. I just want to make sure that, you know, everything is good on your side. Yes, it's been a minute. I was yeah. being a little bit worried. <laughs> no, everything is good. It's just that, yo, like, I've been, you know, ish working and all that stuff. It's just that uh, I just came back and I saw you online. I was like, ah, let me just hop on and just support you a little bit. So, yeah. But everything is good on my side. Everything's good. I was just caught up with work. And yeah, yeah, it's, I've been busy. But yeah, yeah, but yeah. I just heard Liverpool lost today. So, hey, I'm just happy. <laughs> Arsenal lost too. So, you know, both teams, I don't know what I'm saying. Both teams lost today. But that's, it shows how, you know, Premier League, yeah. Like, I, I usually tell people, like, you know, any team can win this league because either big teams can drop points. Look now, they lost to, you know, Arsenal lost. Liverpool lost to Crystal Palace at home crowd. So, oh, I don't know who's going to take the title now because now it's really, it's looking, yo, oh, I now it's just looking beyond now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true. Notorious that she's saying, you know, go easy on our team because she's still she's still feeling it. Oh, Liverpool lost today. <laughs> How did you guys lose to a low block team? Because Crystal Palace is basically a low block team, you know, at home ground. Like, no home ground. Come on, man. No, I watched I the game. They weren't playing a low block until until way down in the second half when they really see that they're really gonna, um, they really can get something out of the game. They started out really good, like attacking. Yeah, it shows um, Roy Hutchinson is one of the good coaches out there. I mean, yeah, the guy's old, but I, I picked it up. He's really good with big teams, but when it comes to small teams, he like he really gets stretched. He will get like a four nil loss, but when it comes to Liverpool, Chelsea, he will turn up. So yo, with Crystal Palace, I'm also shocked that I saw like what you no, know, they beat. But yeah, it just shows Premier League is one of the entertaining you know leagues in the world. So. Yeah, I can't just wait to see what Man City will do and yeah, forward and with Arsenal losing again. It's yeah, I just can't wait to see what's gonna happen in the in the next games. And to be honest with you, you know, Liverpool was my um, was my most likely favorite, you know, because of if of whatever you see I would set up. Because if Man City win, they're gonna win four times in a row. And if Arsenal win, you know that part go of the London rivalry. You know, I cannot stand to hear um, Arsenal fans say London is red because London is blue for me, you know. So it's it's a sticky situation, you know. So Liverpool was my favorite, but if Liverpool cannot do it, I always want City to do it, you know, even though it's going to be four in a row. But for me, I can live with that. But I can't live with Arsenal win the Tiger, to be quite honest. But, you know, I, we just have to wait and see because, like I said, I, I also said that Arsenal is going to flop, which they did today. But it, I, I, I just don't know because if big teams get bad results today, which means they could get good results next week. 
So it's just how they perform as well. But um, big up with Liverpool though, like I never expected them to lose. I I expected them to win or at least a draw. But like it, it's you know like like I said, it's just pressure with the title race. It's all about title race. You know, you get um, also players are also under pressure. You don't. It it happens around. It's all around. So yeah, you get that feeling of losing one game, then you win one game, then you know it's just all about having a strong mentality to win the title. But I, I'm sure not. I don't want Arsenal to win, but Liverpool. I really want Liverpool to win. But right now, like I like I see it, it's yo, it's going to be very entertaining. The next month is going to be entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, let it let it rain, man. Um, we're not in it, but um, I do can sit back and enjoy it. You know, I, I I love to watch good games, and to be quite honest, like what I'm seeing for this season, you know, it's it's really really magnificent. You know, even though we're not in it, but I like these type of race. You know, it, it shows the competitiveness in the in the league, and that's all we want to see. We want to see competitive, you know, games. And that's what the Premier League bring Premier League bring joy to each and every one because of the competitive. You never know who's gonna beat who or when, you know. Um, it's just unpredictable because any team can show it up at any minute, you know. And unfortunately, you know, that um that as I said, I Liverpool lost today, you know, when Arsenal lost, and Man City probably go four in a row, but as I said, overall, you know, it's just some great games. You know, you never can tell. Uh, but the teams from London are bipolar in my in my point of view. You know, because the reason why I said they're bipolar, I don't know if you notice it. Like these these um teams in London, like, like you never know what you're gonna get from them. Look at Fulham. Fulham will, will will turn up against the big team and then the small teams, you know, they don't show up. West Ham is the same thing. So that's why I'm saying, like, you know, some of these teams in London are bipolar. Arsenal is the same thing. They will dominate and then fall away. And the same thing goes for um, the same thing go for uh, the hey, Gary, call me later. Um, the same thing go for um, for the what's the name? Tottenham. You know, always find a way out to spur it up. What do you think? Yeah, you absolutely. Right. I think personally, like, um, in terms of like, with me, like, I see it as like, oh, it's a title race. No, <laughs> with the title race, everyone's gonna be under pressure. It's like that, right? And I see it as like it's it's a great experience to watch because it's competitive. It's meant to be like that, guys. You no, know, like that's football. You know, it would be boring to have Man City having 10 points clear than, you know, one team behind. That's boring, you know. It, it's, it, it's so amazing to have one team that's one point behind, two points behind, because it's unpredictable. You never know who's going to, you know, go above or not. So I like that. I really like that. And it shows how competitive Premier League, it, it even shows how other players are also attracted to come to Premier League. And to play in the Premier League because it's one of the best you know, leagues in the world. So, yeah, it's 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 exciting, man. With Tottenham as well losing to a hey, with a shocker again, like wow. Uh, with Tottenham, like we, we we're not gonna explain it. We already know <laughs> Tottenham. We already know we're not gonna explain it. But um, yeah, like as like I'm saying, like with Premier League, it's all about entertainment. And and I just feel like like one of those three teams right now. I don't know who's gonna win, and um, it's it's just great when it's like that. You know, it just brings back memories back then. You know, so yeah, like I really like where we're at right now in terms of the other teams, but in terms of Chelsea, yeah, I think we'll talk about that. Yeah. Charity FC, and the thing is, um, the reason one of the reasons why I, I really like it, to be quite honest, um, I don't know if you were if you watch the Bundesliga and 
it was a joy for me to really see like Bayern Leverkusen really stop Bayern Munich from go 12 season in a row. Because that's why a lot of people don't really watch the Bundesliga because it's always a one one horse race. And you know, and that's what the Premier League give, you know, the Premier League give you like unpredictable. And uh, this season, the German Bundesliga, you know, um, to see the, uh, the way they celebrate, you know, for winning their first title in 129 years, you know, the first ever title, like that to show you, you know, that football, are, it's, games, the game is changing. And that's what we like, you know. We like we like to see competitiveness, and that's what the game is bringing back again. And I wouldn't mind, you know, if if we continue down this path, you know. And um, I'm gonna say congrats to 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 um, Man City and Arsenal and Liverpool, the three teams that really keep it entertaining for the last couple of months, you know, and continue to bring it down to the to the to the last game of the season. And that's what we will do. That's what we, we want to see as fans. Much as we said we don't want Arsenal to win, but if we go down to the last game of the season and Arsenal do take it, you know, we, we all have to applaud them, you know, and, and congratulate them because this season, to be quite honest, anyone out of the three that lift that title at the end of the season well deserve it. And if it goes to us now, I'll give them the flowers. You know, I, I do know that I'm a rival. I don't like Arsenal fans. I don't like Arsenal, you know. But if it happens that they do win the title, I'll give them the flowers. But I really want it to go to Liverpool because with Liverpool, the way they played like this whole season, like they played because they were in Europa League, um, they were in Europa competition this season. So they played like with ambition to win league. So I really wanted it to go to Liverpool. But we'll just see how it is. Because both teams drop points today. And that's your fault. So <laughs> you will see how the league will go. We'll see how it goes. So, yeah. The Liverpool um, don't fall for me today. It remind me of that... Um... That slip, Steven Gerrard slip against Chelsea, to be quite honest. Mm, Give me some of that moment. <laughs> uh, I remember, and I was watching that game, yeah, that time. And I think we were, we were losing 2-1. I think we are losing 2-1. And he did that slip, that Gerrard slip. And that was the same game he caught a red card, I think. Yeah. Like, I think we beat them. It wasn't that game that we beat them on home ground. Yeah, I think it was the same game. Yeah, I think Dembaba, Dembaba equalized or, or scored a winner somewhere in that bracket. But, somewhere, uh, yeah. yeah. I remember, like, we beat them. But it shows, like, like it's one of those things, like, the players get under pressure because they know that one mistake can cost, you know, everything, what they planned the whole of the season because it's a league title, it's a league race. So, you know, it's 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 a pressure thing. Players will get overwhelmed. It, it happens. Players will get overwhelmed. Then they'll, they'll get a game that they'll lose one game. Then they'll come back in this game. Then they'll win. You know, it's all about keeping that momentum to the point where, you know, they will win games and they'll be consistent to the last game. If they don't do that, if they drop points next game, that's when they you, they'll, you'll see that, okay, they're not ready for the title race. But if you know the next game, they'll win. Okay? Because it happens to big teams, you know? Like, you don't expect big teams to win seven in a row. Like, that doesn't happen. Come on. You know? They can win five games in a row, draw one, lose one. That's just how it happens. You know? So, yeah, like, I just like it how it is. It's competitive. You know? Because I, really, I thought I was favoring Liverpool because they were going at it. They drop points. Us not drop points. Now City looks like they can go ahead because I think they have a game in hand or something. So it's it's challenging now. You see, yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. If you, if you look on the on the run, City got the most easiest run out of the rest. To be quite honest, the only team that City got that I know will give them a little bit of problem, and it's a different team than before because this team don't really play low block. You know, it's Tottenham because um, um, City run, the rest of six games for City is, is, quite, is quite winnable. 
different from different from Tottenham. So Tottenham is the only team that I see will give them a, a little bit of problems at this point in time, or Brighton. But the rest of games is most likely team from in the bottom the bottom half of the table. You know, Arsenal got got us to play. They got Tottenham to play. They got um, who else? They they got Wolves to play. And you know, Wolves are one of those um, team that you never um, you never can tell. You know, um, with Wolves because you know Wolves will turn up just like Fulham. We just turned up, and then they won't turn up. So we never can tell. And that's true, yeah, because Wolves as well. That's the thing about low-block teams. They turn up with big teams, and I hate that about low-block teams. They always turn up with big teams because you will get a random day where City will lose to Wolverhampton. Right now, you got a day where um, Crystal Palace lost to Liverpool. Um, so Liverpool lost to Crystal Palace. Arsenal, who did they lose to? They lost to, and it's a low-block team. Imagine. So, like, it's like the matter of where the bigger teams need to, like, learn how to also dominate more games against the smaller teams in the Premier League, you know? And, like, it's, it's, it's really, like, entertaining now because when I heard this, like, when I finished work and I came back, I'm like, yo, Liverpool lost. And it, it just... It didn't bring, it didn't make me laugh or like happy, but like I was just surprised. Like, wow, that guy's Crystal Palace. It's, you know, but it shows that if Tottenham is the only reason that, you know, these teams are the decisive of the league, we will see. But like I said, you know, I, I don't underestimate low block teams because they always turn up against big teams, guys. You get one day um, Arsenal loses to whatever. You, get, you see, so like I said, if there's uh, big teams, you no, know, they play good and they're not able to drop points, then that's it. But yeah, it's going to be entertaining. You, you never know. Brantford can beat Man City 2 1. You never know. You know? Yeah. So yeah. You know, Arsenal can lose three nil to uh, uh, Brighton. You never know. <laughs> you never know. That's Premier League. You know, Th these low block teams like they give this type of um, pressure. They give competition to the bigger team. It 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 gives them. It gives that uh, Premier League energy. It gives that you no, know, that competition energy. Like yeah, it's competitive. No, it's not all about the big teams. It's all about also the small teams. That's that's why I love Premier League. With Serie A, and you talked about Bundesliga, it's like one-sided, you know, teams. It's a farmer's league. You know, one team gets all the glory. But like with uh, Premier League, it's all about like four teams going ahead for one. And that's why I like Premier League so much. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, we're going to touch on Chelsea a little bit. Um, you know, we uh, just want to yeah. find out what Ty said about how Ty feel about the games today. You know, how you doing, Ty? Ooh! <laughs> Lots of shocking, man. It was not a day for one <laughs> on, on both sides. Um, for, for one, I think Chelsea women lost 2-1 to Man United women. See, uh... I think I think two colossal as well with Bayern. I mean, it. I I would say that the fixtures that would have happened today, they they highlight the fact that football is not a a a, a sport that you can predict consistently every week. A lot of surprises can happen, and and football leaves you guessing what is next. And I mean. The biggest shock, I think, for most people would be the fact that when you look at the statistics for the Liverpool game in particular and, and how they had opportunities and they missed some and they, and they fluffed some of, some of the opportunities that they had and Crystal Palace being able to, to keep hold to a, a one nil lead for, for most of the game after scoring and could have even added more to it in the, the first half in particular. It, it's impressive. 
I mean, Crystal Palace is one of those bogey teams that um, sometimes they can seem um, like a very fluid team and then next they, they will turn into a team that that is mediocre. So you just don't know what you get with Crystal Palace, but they have shown that football is a, is a sport that you can't always predict consistently because you'll have moments like today with teams like Liverpool losing and, you know, all... And two of the, the teams are in the title charge losing. You know, so, it, I mean, it, I've always said it's going to be a, a very close and, and tight title race because in a, in a situation like this, we, we've seen that you have to have the endurance. And it appears Liverpool don't really have the endurance at the moment. Man City um, have, have it in their hands now as it relates to having an opportunity to, to take the lead, but anything can happen. Um, a, a lot can happen in a, in a blink of an eye. So um, don't you think the tie turn into Man City favor right now because of the um, way how, how, how the games go this weekend? Because if you look on Man City um, rest of games, they only got Tottenham and... Um, and Brighton as the only really team that can really challenge them the way how you expect a team to challenge. Yeah, I mean, you can't really say that. I think I think these these um, number of fixtures prove that you cannot um, underestimate any team. And yes, Austin Villa have had a quite a good season, so I suppose it would be fair to to give them the um, benefit of the doubt, but. A team like Crystal Palace who had to, you know, let go of Roy Hutchins because of, or I don't know if he left. They say he was on, it was mutual consent, I think. But, you know, a, a team like Crystal Palace, you don't expect them to be taking a lead and then defending as resolute as they they did. So, I mean, you can't really say that. A lot can still happen. But the title race is obviously going to be tighter than this because I'm sure that at least one team is, one of the, the three teams are going to drop points again and that will be the deciding factor as well but i i don't want to say that oh brighton and and tottenham are the only teams that will really give them a challenge because anything can happen a lot of teams are desperate to to stay up i mean look at what happened with sheffield united and chelsea um last week we we, we saw was it well, i don't know if it was last week but you know when we play them we 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 had the same issues of you know them yes. being bottom and, and, you know, they played, they, they moved the ball so swiftly, they moved the ball creatively, and they were able to, to you know, even be better than us. And, you know, I know coach would, would agree with this, that um, if they had won the game, you, you can't really complain because the, the numbers don't lie. The numbers show that they, they were the better team. So I, I, I wouldn't say that, um, yes, it's in Man City's hands, but I don't think it's a case where um, just looking at those teams alone, because those teams couldn't, might as well not be any challenge for them, and you know they they're still able to win th by a three goal um lead or or be, win by three goals. So I I wouldn't say so. I I, I would still give the underdog teams more more benefit of the doubt that they could uh, they could challenge Man City because Man City have uh, a challenge on their their hand and they had a challenge on their hand when they played against Real Madrid and you could see the little cracks in the wall that you know they still have some weaknesses that can be exposed so i think if the teams are able to to come up with with something a, a good contingency plan they can you know give man city a good challenge well said well said um what are you saying marin um exactly what he said you know it's all about competition it's all about like league, it will be boring, guys. Like it will be boring to have one team to have ten points clear. Like imagine Man City were like twelve points clear, and Arsenal was just like trying to close the gap. You know, it 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 just doesn't give that vibe of competition. You want a league to be competitive for. For other teams to also learn as well, to also experience like, hi, okay, maybe one day they can get to experience that type of vibe or energy. But, you know, 
like like what Ty said, like everything, you know, like with you, you don't with football, it's fifty fifty. I also get it now when I pay it sometimes, like I also get some scores wrong. It's fifty fifty. I can't just say Liverpool's going to win against, you know, whatever team. Because football now is fifty fifty. I see it now, it's fifty fifty. You know, so yeah, at the end of the day we can't underestimate a low block team. A team that plays high, a team that plays attacking, what type of tactics they play. We can never underestimate a team nowadays in Premier League because any other team can turn up in one goal, you know, and you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Aston Villa beating Arsenal 3 1. And you'll be like, what? Like, it's crazy. No, it's just how it is. It's Premier League, it's competitive energy and all that. And I love that about it because, you know, it just brings people together right now and you're talking about it and, you know, we're discussing and, you know, the issues about it and all that. So, yeah, um, yeah, everything's valid from time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fact, it's fact. Because the way, the reason why I said um, Man, uh, Man City is swinging their favor, to be quite honest, um, I got a question about... Um, Chelsea, but I'm waiting on Ty to if, if Ty get back, you know. Um, but the reason why I said it was swinging in their favor because if you notice, um, at this point in time, you know, it's the way how it's set up, right? Man City got to play Real Madrid on Wednesday, you know. And if Man City do get over Real Madrid, Man City don't play on the weekend because they play us in the semi final, you know. So if if Man City do get over Real Madrid at that time, or they don't get over Real Madrid, Manchester City gonna always have have the um, the upper end because they're gonna have a game in end. So if if Arsenal do drop points against Wolves over the weekend, you know, or for instance Liverpool do drop points again, that gonna be Manchester similar in blood. You know, that's why I was saying that that's when Manchester City is going to be dangerous because they already know how. You know, they they, they they got this know-how, you know, as they always said, the big, big blue shark. You know, so once they start to smell blood, they do, they're just going to start a search. You know, and that's why I give them the upper end, to be quite honest. That That is true because since since you're talking about that, and if they play in... Um, Chelsea after this, then they have a break. So they can capitalize on that, which with league and they have easy games. They can, you know. But hey, <laughs> it's Premier League, so uh, Man City, I'm not going to have a hopes on you. That's not how I'm okay. You know, because um, like, with, with these teams, like, they just can't have one bad game. You know, I, I do. I do um, believe that City will have some run of games that they'll win. Maybe three or four games they'll win in a row. But there will be a one game that, come on, guys, there will be a one game that, you know, it'll, they will drop points, then it's going to even the spot. I'm sure when we get to the last two games, it's going to be the three teams competing or two. That's just how it is. And I want it to be like that. If it's the last game and it's only the three teams competing, yo, that would be crazy. Yo, I, that would be one of like, probably maybe it would be one of the greatest moments of Premier League football. But if it happens to be like that, I would want it to be like that. But who knows, yeah. Like, you know, like you said, but Man City, they really looking like, they, they, yeah, they really looking like they actually can get ahead of, you know, Arsenal and Liverpool because the games right now, they, they're actually looking pretty decent right now. So, yeah, we we'll just have to wait and see. They can even, even lose to a low block team, you know, so we just have to wait and see how this plans out. And then we're moving to Chelsea Park. The reason why I said that, though, I, I really do want Arsenal to take care of Wolves because if you notice, Wolves is just always been following us. And as a Chelsea fan, to be quite honest, I do want Arsenal to take all points. Don't get me wrong, because if Arsenal take all three points from Wolverhampton, all and we definitely um, get all three points against um, Everton, 
that opened up a four or five point gap between we and, and, and Wolves. And that's what I want as a Chelsea fan, you know, to, 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 to come into the Chelsea session. You know, um, for me, I'm going to Chelsea first at all times. So I'm going to always want team that in around us, you know, to, to, to drop points so we can, um, we can advance. And honestly, I'm rooting, I'm rooting for, um, for, for, for those teams that are going to play the teams around, around us at this point in time, because it um, doesn't matter how much opportunity we get. This is a question how we cannot, you know, take advantage of all these opportunity that we've been getting for the last couple of months, you know, to drift away from, from the pack. Like every time that we get a chance to really, you know, open up a gap between us and who's behind us, we find a way how to stay with them. You know, um, I don't know if you ever thought of it or look, look at, look at it the way I'm looking at it. Is this, is this about Chelsea? Yes, about Chelsea. Okay. Um, I I, I kind of think where you, you kind of look at it. I Because the way I think, I just don't think. Like Chelsea right now, the way they play ball, it's like I think they, they do want to compete for European competition and they don't. But it's like we need teams to to really give us points. Now we need you know, Arsenal in terms of Arsenal and all the other teams to beat Wolverhampton. We need also um, Man United to draw points, Newcastle to draw points. They didn't draw points this weekend, so it's a big loss. So we need all those teams to draw points for us to get to that you know, top eight, top seven slot. But it's a problem. Well, if we need teams to draw points, then it's a problem to us because we're not capitalizing on on, on our points, you know? Same thing with the game. Ty just spoke about it with Sheffield United. You know, like, that game frustrated me. I didn't want us to draw that game, man. Like, that game was supposed to be a win. And to lose points as well, like, and now we have to rely on other teams for us to go further ahead on other teams. You know, it's... It's really frustrating the way they play ball. Like, I just don't know where Chelsea Football Club is really going at the moment right now here in time. Ah, uh, you're you're hundred percent correct, man. None of us know, to be quite honest. Nothing. I wish we all can sit here and tell you that um, you know, that's that's this this is this is where we're heading to or. But none of us know at this point in time, and um, a lot of things is going around in the news, you know, um, about the the stadium and and um, what do you think about um, we're being linked um, with Xavi Alonso from Barcelona. Uh, what do you think about if we do get Xavi Alonso as a manager? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I I rate Xavi Alonso as a player. Is is it, wait? Is it Xavi Hernandez or Xavi Alonso? Sorry. No, Xavi. Uh, Xavi, the one at Barcelona. Oh, Xavi Hernandez. Oh, Hernandez. okay. Yeah, sorry, I said no, Xavi Alonso. Oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 no problem, sir. So, um, with Xavi Hernandez, ah, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know because you know. I only saw him at Barcelona, which he did good, okay? I, I give him props. He did good. You know, um, you know, as a player, I give him props, man. He was an excellent player. I watched him play ball with Messi, Iniesta, uh, Busquets, Puyol, you know, uh, all those guys, um, you know, Alves and all those, oh, like, those guys showed me football. But, um, in terms of coaching wise, like manager wise, I I just don't know, you know, because right now I just feel like this team really needs an experienced coach, like someone that already knows that, you know. Yes, uh, Xavi has already won trophies. Yes, I understand that he has. You know, maybe he can do something in Chelsea. You know, I'm not saying he can't, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, well, is he going to be fit enough for this project? Because if we give him this project job, will he even do the project, you know? You know, I'm not being negative, but, like, to him, like, I feel like he doesn't want the idea of project. He would want the idea of winning trophies. And we add the idea of project, you know, of building players and building stadiums and building all that. And to Xavi Hernandez, he doesn't want that. He wants to win trophies. He's a guy that wants to win, you know. He wants a team to be competitive and to combine that and that it's going to be challenging because, you know, one or two, you know, they won't align to whatever they, you know, communicate the way, however they communicate, you know. Then that's why I prefer, you know, someone that really like, that really has Chelsea heritage behind him, a Chelsea culture behind him back then in the past, that has something behind him that can, you know, lead this team. You know, if you bring uh, uh, coaches outside, it has to be someone that's very elite, that can, you know, manage these players, you know, that can manage the project. Because right now, as I'm seeing, like, we're still in the project era. And if you bring someone that's competitive and trying to win titles, going to take him years to win trophies. And it's going to take him years to take as that's to that point. And it's going to be frustrating. You know, if we bring Xavi right now, right, and things don't happen, we'll get him fired. That's how we are with Chelsea. If we get him here for two seasons, one season doesn't win, the next season doesn't win anything, ah, he's fired, bro. You see? Because that's how we are. So I don't want him to be in that pressure, no. But, no, if he really comes... I think he'll make a great coach. He'll make a, a standing coach. But I just see, I just want to see how he'll work with Chelsea Football Club with the project. If he's going to work with the project, if he's also going to implement with the title race and all the title competition and all that stuff, with this mentality, with the project, I, 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 maybe I could see something. That's why I prefer Hansi Flick because Hansi Flick is he's a project guy. He understands that because he's dealt with younger players at Bayern Munich and all those teams. So, yeah, if Xavi comes in, you know, yeah, I have no problem, though. The the thing that I realized with Xavi, um, he don't afraid to bring 16 years old and 15 years old through the rank, to be quite honest. And if we're going for a youth project... Um, he will be the probably one of the right the right person to 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 go with this project of what I've been seeing because these young players that Barcelona are bringing through they're no joke you know but um I see we link with even um the Newcastle manager too you know today and and um even um Nagelsmann Nagelsmann already turned us down so I don't know how Nagelsmann be linked back with the job again. And um, that's for me, you know, I don't know what you think about those two. I personally don't know as well, because I now with Nagelsmann, I don't know how these guys deal with their contracts and how they talk or how they, you know, they view, you know, the football club. Some managers don't really want to... Uh, manage Chelsea football. I don't know. There are some managers that don't really want to, you know, manage Chelsea football club. That I understand. Okay, but in terms of uh, Nagelsmann and all those guys, I really don't know how they do their stuff. I I do I don't know how they are linked to Chelsea. Maybe there's um someone that's communicating with them, you know. But if it happens that. There's some sort of communication with, between those managers. It's good because it shows that we are ready to have an elite manager, you know, instead of like going for mid managers. Like, I'm not saying Graham Potter is mid, it's just that those guys don't have experience. They didn't have experience for Champions League, they never experienced winning trophies yet. Those are the type of managers we're going for right now, you know. So, I don't want that. I, I want know a manager that okay this guy have has won something back then 
has is done something with the team back then and is trying to implement something with this team, something new with our team. That's what I want. An elite manager. That's it. You know, not you know, and I heard you know links with uh Robert De Serbi, you know, and I'm just like, okay, I right, Chelsea, we really go in there, but it's I right. people really back him up. I understand the back uh Robert De Serbi. But I man, if a manager comes in, hasn't done anything, and if I seen he hasn't done anything like winning trophies, you know, he has to prove me wrong. But like I said, I just want an elite manager. And if Nagelsmann is linked, I'm so happy that he's linked. If uh, Hansi Flick is linked, great. And I want those managers, especially Xavi, if he can come. I, but I, I, I just doubt Xavi as well. But if those guys can come, I'm sure we can be somewhere better next season or other further in another season. So, yeah. Big up, big up, rich money maker in the building. Coach was in the building also, you know, Ty. You know, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. You know, um, it's it's kind of it's kind of funny, yeah. so, you know, the way, yeah, the way how they um they they are we've been linked with even Nagelsmann and the way how we turned on the project from day one. You know, so I don't think Nagelsmann would have really take a big U turn or less. The terms that he agreed with, or we did want, or less they were gonna give it to him. And I don't think right now we're financially, you know, set where we can go and get Nagelsmann all the players that he need, you know. And it that's just my that's just on my part. You know, I don't think we can give Nagelsmann's Nagelsmann all that players that he's gonna really want because Nagelsmann want a challenge right now. He don't want to he don't want to build a project, especially in England. He want to come here to 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 make a mark. You know, he want to stamp his name because Klopp is going out. So he is, he want to say that he probably the second best manager in the in the league, you know, where we're going to challenge Pep. So for me, if we're not going to give him players to really reach to that point, he's not going to, he's not going to, not, not going to come to us. So I don't really think that we're really going to get, get novices, man, to be quite honest. He's off the list. You know, so Xavi is a one that I would consider of the way I saw how always bringing out two of the young players at Barcelona. And um, we have some of the best talent um, in England for the last 15 years, but we just never know how to, how to um, gradually use you know, them. Yeah, yeah, use them. You're correct. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, you're right. You know, use them. But we never know how to use them. Or, or to build a system to, 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 to gradually bring them in into the first team. You know, we never have a pathway for them. And Xavi showed that he, he know how to do that. Because we got, right now we got a few young players that I know can be a part of the first team. But Pochettino just didn't didn't trust the these young players. So all these injuries that we get, you know, it's it just never, um, never, never, never trust the young players. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna touch on the hotel in a, in a little bit because that was a masterclass oh, yeah. piece. The way how the owners, um, you know, do that business. I know for a fact that the owners, um, you know, they they know the business part. So the business part they, is not. A problem. You know, they, so they can't be billionaires for no reason, guys. They can't. They're billionaires for a reason, so they they know business. So I leave I leave money to them. So yeah. They're very they're very intelligent people. So they'll, they'll I think they'll make money. I don't know how they'll make money, they'll try and make money. You know, since these owners come in, they always people are always saying they're finding loopholes, but it's not no loophole. Everything was there to see. It's just because of other people wasn't just looking deeply enough. Because anything you do in life, you know, you have to, you have to look really deep, deep down, you know, to find to find answers. And that's what these owners are doing. They're finding they're finding needs and ways how to get around the system. Because there's every system, there's always around a way out to get get around it. You know, every system have a have a weak link or a weak part. You know, it's just for you to find it. 
And that's what these owners are doing. They're finding all the loopholes. And you notice every time they find it, so they come around and close it the next season. You know, so these owners are smart. That's why they're, 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 they're billionaire, because they're smart. If they, this guy's are smart, if they're not smart, right? If they're smart, why are they building, they're rebuilding the stadium? Think about it. Why are they rebuilding everything? Okay, they have a plan, right? It's just that we, I also, um, Coach said it in another, um, he had a, a live stream before. And I was listening to his live stream. I didn't hop into it that time. I was just listening, going back. He said something about how um, you should give people time and owners time because you really don't see what their vision are. And when when they talked about the stadium and rebuilding and all that, these people are not actually... They're doing something different now. It's like they they erased Chelsea legacy. There's no more Roman era now they're trying to build their own era with their own era they're trying to do new things like they're trying to build something new and with with that with new they're trying to also bring new players and that new project everything you know and and i also see it like okay this thing doesn't really take it takes time yeah sometimes this first two years doesn't work out it takes time you know, but it, it really gets to a point where, you know, after three, four years, if there's no results, you know, like fans really get to a point, no, you know, there's something wrong. But like, like we, we basically speaking, these guys are the billionaires. They'll make money. And the way they'll make money, they'll make money. And if even if they sell players to Saudi, you have seen it before, the, how they made profit, they, sell, they sold players to Saudi. Um, yeah, we'll just see how things work. You know, I'm not worried about the financial problems going on to next season. I'm not worried about that because I already know we're selling players. Yeah, so, so, I don't worry yeah. about the I don't worry about the finance because of the way how these um, owners are very intelligent. Where they they know they know they know how to make money. So I don't really worry about the financial this season. But I'm just worried about it for probably the next season because if we um, if we cannot um, get get this right in this season, then next season I'll probably be worried about it for the next financial um, you know step. That's when I've been worrying about it. But I know these owners make mistake, you know, and um, when they just started out, they do make mistake. Let me um, adjust our rich money maker. Um, Come, they did make mistake, and you know everybody, everyone make mistake in life. You know, it's just what you do about it. When you make those mistakes, it's how you go about it. You know, if if you're gonna correct it. So in this summer, we we always sit here as Chelsea fan and see, you know, if we um, correct some of those mistakes, because a lot of the um, a lot of what's coming out in the media, I never really um, buy it to be quite honest, because I am a Chelsea supporter. You know, and I'm going to always think positively about my team because Chelsea, I, I eat, sleep and drink Chelsea, you know, to be quite honest, because Chelsea for me, it's a thing that, um, you know, saved my life. Uh, believe it or not, you know, I never really taught this on the year, but Chelsea saved my life in many ways, you know, and one day I probably give you guys the full story, you know, but for me, it's. It's, it's a joy to sit and watch Chelsea, win, lose, or joy. You know, I'm going to always be a Chelsea supporter. And for me, the negativity that, that that's coming out, I think most of that comes coming from rival, you know, because if we all supposed to look in, look in and, and talk it and speak the truth, you know, um, Roman Abramovich come and, and revolute English Premier League, you know, forever. Roman come and change the whole entire way of thinking in the Premier League, like everyone have to keep up, you know, and a lot of these fans, when these new owners come in, first, when, when Roman gets, gets sanctioned, right? When Roman gets sanctioned, like the whole entire English Premier League, 19 teams was celebrating because they thought this would be the end of Chelsea. You know, when these new owners come in, and Maureen, you can come in after I say this, um, when these owners come in, 
what they did is they go young and they buy a whole bunch of young players. A lot of different outlets that I listen to always saying that they never see this happen in, in the game before. You know, so they were scared of what Chelsea was buying and doing at the, at the moment. So they all sit in there and want this to fail. You know, the owners, they did it too quickly. You know, but if you want to make a change, this is how you make a change. You have to gradually give people time to grow together. Because anything you do in life, you know, for the first time, you're not going to just get up and be a pro at it. You know, you have to you have to get, 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 get used to what you're doing. And these young players are going to gradually grow together and build a bond. You know, and then then we can judge them after that. But for me, next season is the time that I will be judged. I'll be more judgmental. Um, like everything you said, spot on. It's all about going back to our scouting director, all those guys that get our players. You know, Win Stanley, bro, rich money makers. My guy, like, if how do we tell a one or two or three star experienced scouting director who doesn't know how to get players to tell them how to get experienced players? How do you tell a brand that doesn't know how to get experienced players? You tell them, bro, we need to fire this guy. We need to get proper, good directors. That's it. That's how, like, tell them, look, look, guys, look at, look at um, Bayern Munich, look at Real Madrid, look at Man City, look at all those elite play, elite uh, clubs right now. Why do they always have good players, guys? Think about it. Yes, we get young players, right? We get good young players. We get those players for the project. But every single time, these guys, when they make signings, right? Real Madrid, Man City, PSG, all those big clubs, Barca sometimes, they make these good signings with good players. Why, guys? Think about why. They have good directing. They have good scouting directors. They have good directors. They have a foundation. In this football club, we don't have that. We have breads that only want to go for mid-players. Pedro Neto, Bomang Mang. Modric, okay, away, you balling now. Modric, away. Cole Palmer, my guy. Hey, it's your gem. Okay. You know? Uh, Caicedo, he came from a mid-club player, mid-club team. You know? The only experienced players we can probably touch is the older guys. Maybe Modric, maybe Cruz, maybe all those guys that have died out. Because all those other guys were like, Bob Bellingham, they, they cost so much, bro. We have to pay a release clause for Bellingham and all those guys. That's a release clause. That's a lot of money to pay. But like, like what I'm saying is just like, Chelsea don't have a foundation on the direct team, bro. Like the directors is just not good enough. Even if we just explain to these guys, please guys, let's go get experienced players. They'll never do that, bro. They'll never... They'll go give me some other guy from Aston Villa, bro. And I don't want that guy, bro. I want someone like Valverde from Real Madrid. I want someone from, like, Griezmann. I want Griezmann, bro. I want um, uh, Kings like Coleman. And they won't get those guys. They won't. Because we don't have those type of directors that can get us those players. So, like, it, it comes back, like, with uh, Todd, they just did everything wrong. They built everything wrong. They hired people that, they hired wrong people. So they have to like really sit down, analyze and really see like, okay, where do I want to take this football club? Like if I really want good players, who do I hire to get good players? And you tell me Paul will stand will give me, but he won't give me Bellingham. I'm telling this guy won't give me nobody. He won't. Even, even Bappe, you won't give me Bappe. He won't. You just give me some other guy from Brighton, some other guy from Swansea, some other guy from Leeds United, some other guy from... But I don't the, want that. I don't. The thing is, you know, I understand what you're saying, but, but you know these owners, Not we cannot sit here and blame these owners only. Uh, you know when... um. 
if you listen Frank Lampard um, interviews, like a lot of these players, the former owners get all these players to bought and they did not. So when we're going to sit here and we're going to blame these owners, these owners are already coming in into a mess. Because remember, Frank Lampard would try to get Declan Rice. They didn't want to purchase Declan Rice. They want to look somewhere else. He tried to get Drew Burnham. He told them to go get him. He tried to get Erlen Allen when he was in Scandinavia. So all these three players, Frank Lampard tried to sign, right? All these young players before they reach, they reach where they're supposed to, you know, um, come, um, true, true many, the midfielder at Real Madrid. That um that friends midfield exactly yeah you know yeah. this ownership get that player to buy for about 50 million 50 million and they did not so all these young players and these experienced players are world class players that we're looking at right now they already went to teams so we cannot get them anymore wish we have the opportunity to get all these players you know and and, and right now there was probably would they would have probably sold off for a big big fee because of what's going on, or they probably would have still been here because the team would have been, been better. You know, so imagine we, we did make all those signing and give them give them five or six year contract. They still would have been at the club at this point in time, you know, and the team wouldn't be where it is. So you guys, are, we have to understand it's a rebuild. It's a rebuild. We could have built a core out of those those players that, that I just named. And when, when these ownership come in, they try to go with the experience. Remember, they buy a Kulabali, you know, and they buy um, that guy that used to play um, Aubameyang, the Sterling. So they try, they try to get, they try to go the experience road, and the experienced player who just wasn't performing. So instead of you go back and buy a more experienced player that didn't perform, what they did, they they tried, they turned to you, you know. At least they said, okay, we can give them a couple of years to grow together. So. For me, I want to put all the blame and all the, on this ownership, to be quite honest, because they did try. They tried both ways, but our fans just doesn't see it because a lot of young players have been bought at the same time. But they did try go down the experience road. I, I definitely blame the directors. Yeah, I, you can blame the owners. Yeah, it's okay. You no, know, everyone has their own opinion, man. Like. You no, know, everyone has their own opinion of seeing things and saying things. You no, know, I have no problem with that. I'm sure people don't have. No, no one has. I would never have a problem with that, guys. But I blame the directors because those directors gave us those players, bro. The directors gave us those players. Bro, I've never seen. Bro, look at our directors we had back then before we had Win Stanley. They gave us Hazard. Gave us um, William, gave us Courtois, they gave us um, Aspen Quetta, they gave us um, Ashley Cole, Becky when I was, when I was in his prime. Who did they give us? They gave us uh, Makeleli, they gave us, um, who is this guy from? He used to play DM when Marino was there that time. Uh, Diara, I think it was uh, Diara, I'm not sure. He gave us that uh, guy. Diara, Diara was there. Yeah. Right now. And we got exactly a Costa. And we got Diego a Costa. Oh right. my God, such fabricas! Ah, oh, Jesus, bro. Oh, who? How? How many players have we heard? How many players must I list that we had so much great players in this football club, right? And it, it doesn't come to the owners. Yes, we had uh, Roman. We had Roma era during those players. We had Juan Mata, Oscar. All those guys, when we had Kevin De Bruyne at that time, yes, we had good players. Why we had good players? We had good directors, guys. We had good directors. No, we don't have good directors. We have directors that go for mid-table clubs. We have directors that go for much lower uh, players. They don't look at... They look at... Um, experienced players and quality players look at Musiala as like yo 200 mil we won't pay for that they look at it like that like yo Musiala I'm not gonna pay for that but they would rather pay for Pedro Neto 100 mil for Pedro Neto or who's cooking right now and they'd rather pay 80 million for Dominic Solanke 
because he, he played an excellent season for Bournemouth. I don't know. Eh? They will pay eighty million for Dominic Solanke, but they won't put that money for someone that's experienced that that played in Champions League. Do you see what like the mentality of the di- the directing? Like it's not there. We don't have a proper director. No, the owners. I don't. The owners don't know football. They only know baseball. The American owners, man. I, I just don't. I would never give no. I would never hate them about that. They will never know football right away. You know, it's gonna take them time to know our culture, to know how we do things, you know how football works. It's gonna take them time. I blame the directors. I blame those guys. Those guys that gave us Enzo Fernandez, gave us Casero, gave us Nori Mariweke, that gave us Modric, that gave us um, Chile, that gave us Disasi, they gave us all those guys. I blame those guys. You're correct. And the only one I did a problem with when we really get to be quite honest was Disasi. Because um, Bali Chile, I didn't know that young player when he was just coming through because Cesc Fabregas was there um, at Monaco. So I used to watch a lot of Monaco, and for me, I saw him as a as a talent. You know, I did I did to be quite honest, I did rate him highly. So when we get him, I was excited for that one. You know, but um, what I'm saying is um, is Disasi is not better than Shalaba. So those are some little mistakes that they make. Where I, in my point, I think that you know that was forty five million dollars could have stay stay right there in the pocket. You know, and um. When I look at it, like some of the 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 the, 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 the midfielders that we signed, you know, um, we could have we could have do, yeah, you know, we could have do do the same thing. Um, what do you think about what the owners did with the hotel? You know, because of the way out there, um, everyone was saying that we're doomed with this financial. Um, but to be to to be hearing. That the owners sell the hotels to the blue coal, um, blue coal um, group, you know, to help um, balance the, the 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 finance, you know, um, what do you think about it? If it's true, I, I'm going to believe it because this guy's wasted a billion. This guy's wasted a billion on dumb players and wrong. Let's just say billion on wrong investment. We did a wrong investment on a billion. And I understand why they had to sell these hotels there. It's business. They're losing money. These people are losing money. It's not like, you know, they losing money because we need to get players. Players like Osman, players like all those guys we want. They have to lose money to get those players. Imagine you have to lose eight players to get two players. Two players. For next season, we need to lose eight players. They have to lose something else just to get two more players. And one player is probably costing like a hundred mil. Do you see where do you see what I'm getting? Like yeah. the, the the way they dealt finance is wrong. The way they dealt it was wrong. The way they maneuvered, they should have maneuvered in a way where like that billion where they invested, they invested on proper players. Because all that money is wasted on what, you know? Because they expected us to be on top three, top four, with probably a trophy. That's what they expected us to be at. Right now, we're not there. We're on 12th place, 11th place. We're trying to get Europa competition with FA Cup. You know, anything can happen. But they're losing money. And that's just how it is. It's business, guys. It's business, you know? I understand that it's business, and I understand some people, you know, will be hacked about it. You know, that, that's just billionaires are like that, man. I understand. No, like when I've no when I see billionaires do these things with Roman. Also, Roman had his uh, dodgy things behind the scenes. He did some dodgy things behind the scenes. You no, know, because this guy's the desperate it's business. So yo, like it's. For Chelsea right now, if it's like that, I'll believe so. If it's like that, yes. You no. Know? But in in terms of financial, if if this carries on the next couple of years, 
mid table Chelsea, this carries on. I just don't know where we're gonna be. Like, I are we gonna decline or we're gonna? I just don't know. I just don't know. That's why these games that's coming up would be very important to to really open up a gap between we and we and tent, you know, and at least they are amongst the the top the top eight, you know, because we can at least finish at least um sixth, because Tottenham right now is in fifth, you know, and you got um Newcastle and Manchester United, um in sixth and seventh, and West Ham in eighth, but we got um two games in hand on them overall. You know, so that's what I'm saying. If we win, if we win this game that's coming up on um, tomorrow, we can at least, you know, one point behind uh, West Ham. You know, three points behind Manchester United and um, and Newcastle with a game in, with two games in end. You know, or a game, I think two games in end overall. So therefore, we 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 have it in our hands. You know, it's just. It just Pochettino just need to start to do the right thing because keep on making some of these little mistakes that he's making right now, not gonna help us, you know, because right now we re- we reach the end stage of, of of the of the season, you know, and this is a time where he's a he's a do or die. So it's time to do, you know, and stop take bullets. Like right? you cannot take so much so much bullets. So it's time for him right now to start dodge all the bullets. You know, and find ways out to win. It doesn't matter about about the 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 way um, the way we play anymore. It's 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 always gonna be about the result because this is a result in you know uh, sports. Result do matter, so we have to take all three points against Everton. We have to start to start to take points from these teams. You know, find a way. You know. Either to give them the ball and sit low block and catch them on the counter, you know, we have to find some way because that's what that's what this this season is about right now is to find a way. We do, that is very true. We do really need to find a way because uh, right now it's not looking good for Poch. But like I said, hey, now for Poch, man, he lied to me. He lied. He broke my heart. No, the first interview, what did he say? He said Champions League football. He told us, like, on screen, guys, on camera, interview, Champions League football. Chelsea will compete. Chelsea will compete for the league. And Chelsea will dominate in the Champions League uh, competition. Where are we now? You see, so I'm not really worried about Poch. Poch is out of my mind. You know, like... If Pudge right now, like he, his his job is to just play the cards right, and like I, I've I, I was on a Twitter space, and one of those guys they were they were Pudge in one of the guys were Pudge in, and I was, you know, sometimes I told them like I really I won't really explain myself and prove myself to you that hey this guy's not good quality enough for Chelsea. You will see for yourself. There'll be a day you'll say, okay, I don't want Poch anymore. Okay, that's on your terms. But this guy, for me, he's shown me, nah, man, nah. Even if he'll, he'll try to come up with games that he'll give us, you know, one or two, he needs to turn up against Monday. There's no need, there's no, there's no like, excuses of my injury. I don't want to hear injury. Me, I don't want to hear injury. I don't want to hear players, they, were, they lost confidence, Players lost mentality. What? What? I don't want to hear that. I don't. Want, I, watch, I just want to hear Chelsea win. You are done. That's what I hear. I want to hear that. And I don't. We don't have a manager like that. No, we have a manager like that's just like pointing fingers. The what doesn't want to take accountability of his own actions. A manager that doesn't want to take, you know, like an oh, if you lose a game, just admit you lost the game. You didn't get it right. He doesn't want to. He wants to play middle injuries, players, and to have a coach like that now, nah, he's berated. No, no. So uh, right now, man, like, I, if Chelsea can turn up into these next games, especially Everton, if we turn up Everton, it, it has to be a must win. If we turn up, all right, you know. 
but yeah, with Pochettino, man, like if if the owners give Pochettino time right now, I don't know where we're going, guys. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Bro. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. But I'm I'm here. I'm 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 here. You know, I don't want to spoil it for you. But by by um by reading into a lot of things that have been said over the last couple of um couple of weeks, you know, um I don't think Pochettino is gonna be sacked this upcoming season. I think they're more likely gonna gonna judge him, you know, at the at the the midway that the the second half of the season. If we started well next season, he's gonna stay, you know. But if um if we um we're we're, we're still still performing the same way, then I then I heard they'll they'll that's when they will consider sacking him. But you know, hopefully, you know, you're right, you know, because this summer is gonna be a lot of manager go around. Mary Brown gonna be happening because you know Amarin is going to Liverpool. You know that's that's one of the most lamest secret that that can ever um can ever be. You know when Bayern Munich, you know who's gonna go to Bayern Munich because the I heard they're talking about Nagelsmann is gonna go back there and Barcelona gonna be looking for a manager too. So it's gonna be a lot of manager Mary Brown and also also um. Manchester United is looking for a manager also. So you got a few of those big teams right now is, is looking for um is looking for manager. So this summer is gonna be not only about transfer of players, it's gonna be uh, about transfer of managers oh, too. For manager be, too. Yeah. Jesus. No, yeah, you're correct. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those. One of those things, you know, and who right now going to want to sit there and take this Chelsea project that we have right now where two seasons in a row finish finish um, bottom? It's going to be a manager that's really got heart, you know, because even Pochettino, you hear, said that he risked his career to, to, to come to Chelsea. So it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a long summer for us. You know, it's going to be a, a, a sit and wait. To be quite honest, even with transfer, like none of us know how the transfer market gonna cheat us. So it's gonna it's gonna be a long, long summer for us. To be quite honest, like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see things that we like, and we're gonna see a lot of things that we don't like. Because even us men, I don't even think we're gonna get us men. In my honest opinion, the only way we get Victor us men, or less, we finish in the in the European places. That's the only way we get us men, in my in my humble um, opinion. You know, I can be wrong, but for me, it's not even about getting even Victor Osman. For me, it's about getting a striker that can put the ball in the back of the net. Ali Watkins is a guy that I would really look at right now because he already know the league. You know, I will try to look within to get a striker, and Ali Watkins in every season are showing that he's in he improved game by game you know so i will take that in deep consideration i wouldn't watch the age because jackson is there you know to gradually learn and to grow because jackson can be a good player he just need uh a striker is there that's gonna push him thank you say ish thank you ish if you were around the people that have been telling this to some people were busy backing me up like this. I told people Jackson needs competition around him. You know, he just needs a, a strike around him. That's it. You no, know, people are telling me other sorts, man. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, but like, um, yeah, it, it it just comes. It, it boils down to, you know, every situation we have. It's a crisis now. We have in Chelsea Football Club. Like you said, you love the football club. I even love it to to death. No, but hey, to really see my football club in this type of situation is bad. And, you know, um, I'm really glad, like, we can speak and, you know, try to come to a conclusion and see, like, what, how can this team improve, you know? Like, we really want this team to improve. You know, if they get a, a coach next season, which, you know, like you guys said, they doubt they will, you know, 
if they do get a coach, you know, I, I just want that coach to really make this team good, you know, to, so that we can go back to the ways where we used to compete, even in European competition, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. But, yeah, man, coming to the women's team, I don't know. I don't know, blood. I don't know, bro. I don't know how they do the women's team. I don't know that. Since they talk about MAs being um, leaving, you know the the team. The team is just just like with Liverpool, you know, because if we we can we can give Emma a big a big round of applause because she she revolved the whole entire women's game. To be quite honest, you know, and I'm I'm just disappointed that she didn't go out winning everything in the in our final season, but um. You know the the game. I saw where we should get at least a penalty, you know, to equalize the game. And unfortunate, one of them was an ball. And I get I don't know if they got VAR over there, but and the next one was a uh, was another tackle that you know that that they take the Chelsea player out. But um, we just was unfortunate, you know. Um, but um, I know that um, who's ever gonna take over for Emma? Gonna come in with a with a solid foundation because the women's team, to be quite honest, is well set. Because Chelsea buy a lot of young players. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that um they they will rise again. We just need another manager, you know, with another fighting spirit that can pump some new blood into these players. Because you know, once a manager said they're gonna leave, uh, especially if the players are attached to them, you know, the emotion. Probably they, they're trying to hide it, but it's still there. And I think that's what um, Liverpool don't fall right now is just because of the emotional. You know, the emotion is there, and they're trying so hard, you know, to 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 um to win it for the manager. And you know, anytime you start to try so hard, it's gonna it's gonna wear you down. One point. So I think that's what's been happening right now with with the women's team, and what's happening right now with Liverpool. I just think the pressure is too much, you know, to know that you're not going to see that manager again, you know, at the end of the season. So you're trying to do everything to give him what, he, you know, a, with, a, with, a, with a wonderful sent off. And that, that for me, should have been broke at the end of the season, you know. Um, but, un but as I said, it's unfortunate that we didn't win against Arsenal in the final, and I'm fortunate that we didn't beat Manchester United today. You know, hopefully we can go on and win the title because we're still we're still up there with Man City at on top. So let us see how it how it turned out. Don't don't we have um a Barcelona semi final? Yeah, we got League. yeah we got Barcelona in the semi final of the Champions League. I think sometime Yo. this week. You know. Uh, the ladies will ball. I know. Since we have Ramirez and um, also James back, Lorraine James back, they will ball. I'm, I know for sure they'll um, they'll win a trophy end of the season. You know, they just had a bad game today. I they lost to Man United. Wow, that's crazy. Because normally Man United women's team they're not really that good. So they were really lucky. Yeah, they were lucky. Because they're not good. They're not. I, when I watch them play ball, they're really not that good. Compared to our women's team, they're not good. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, sorry about that. But I'm sure they will, because Barcelona beat us uh, previously in the semifinals. I'm sure we'll probably get revenge on them this, this time. Who knows? Maybe we'll get revenge this time. Then we'll probably win the league. On the woman's side, but yeah, big up to Emma. You're like Emma Hayes has been one of like those managers for like you know women's teams. I think she actually made a credit for herself to actually coach national teams now for herself. So like yeah, like like big up to her. Big up. She she created a strong foundation around uh, the women's team, and I want that with the men's team. If they can do that with the men's team as well, you know, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you know, um, Rich Money Maker, thank you for all your insight. And um, I always appreciate it. 
you know, always here supporting and always giving us insight. You know, uh, really, I really appreciate it. But um, I see, I see this kid that um, that we bought. You know, um, Whisper. I see him killing it in the in the development team. To be quite honest, he started score a lot of goals, like what he was doing over there in Jamaica. And I saw him getting a lot of assists. And um, I think that's really good for us. Is is, is he from Jamaica? Yes, whisper. Yeah. Okay. Is he um is he in the academy right now? Yeah, he's a striker, but um, yeah, he's playing for the um the development team. Him and Washington been having a wonderful partnership over there. They've been assisting each other and been scoring, you know, fluidly. We, um, to be quite honest, that that for me looked like a good partnership already building, you know, and hopefully that they long let it rain and they can bring it into the first team. Mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe there's something, and you know, they just need to get experience, man. Like, once they get um, um, senior team, then they can, you know, do their thing. You know, especially Washington. I want to see the the Jamaican guy. I want to see how he plays, cause oh, I already yeah. just saw Washington plays. Oh, you um, you can download the FIFA app stand on your phone. You know, um. It's it's free, you know. Download the FIFA app stand, and they they show all the sometimes after a couple of days after the game play, they will show the development. You know, the, if you're not um, if you're not paying for the subscription, they will um, show you the development. You can watch the games. That's how I've been watching the games. You know, um, what you think about um, Pochettino should get John Terry, you know, as part of his coaching staff. Uh, yeah, I think that would be. A good idea because he's also he knows Chelsea heritage that that would be a good idea right for me because some people say nah that's not a good idea I don't want John Terry to come you know but for me because he knows the heritage of Chelsea Football Club he knows the legacy of it he knows what Chelsea Football Club is he knows so for me it's good because he's gonna implement that on the players Right, is going to do. He's gonna take the experience that he had with Chelsea, and implement that with the players. So I want that. I want. I want leadership like that around our players. They gain confidence. They gain, you know, all that. Yeah, it's it's all about you know, being strategic and being smart with like how we hire people and all that stuff. So. Yeah, because he's in the under 18, you know, he's a part of the setup in the under 18. So that's why I was saying, you know, it would be good, you know, if if we can um, at least, you know, um, have him as a part of the, the coaching staff, you know, to help these young players through this rough path, you know. <laughs> okay, rich money maker. <laughs> yeah, keep me updated, man, because I would love, I would love to, um, I would love, love like one of them, one of them, you know, be a part of the 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 the, the coaching staff, you know, and at least, you know, to 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 teach these young players, you know, what it takes to put on that shirt, you know, what it takes to be a part of um Chelsea. You know that that will um that will be a, a big plus. You know to see the young players really um live up to the expectation. You know because sometimes you know we can we can sit here and we can talk, but you know sometimes the players going through difficult times. You know they they just definitely need someone to hold their hand and to guide them. You know so hopefully that you know someone like that can can able to step in. You know, and help lift them and motivate them. That is true. That's um one perfect example when we uh we got this guy, this midfielder man, from Atletico um Saul, yes, from uh Atletico Madrid. When we got that guy, right, we got him at the point where um Atletico Madrid were willing to sell him. Apparently, like it. They were not playing ball. Like he wasn't getting first team football, 
like 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 what you said like players do go in a rough patch and the time where we signed Saul he was at a rough patch where like um I I heard reports that he was depressed. He wanted to go back home. Wanted to go back to Spain, to his family and all that. He had a bad choice coming to Chelsea, and also that affected his game. And I saw that like there were games where when he would play, like he was slow, rusty. His that like the, his head wasn't on the game. There were times like 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 I see why like. You say like it. It's true. Like, like all those kind of things really affects players. Like when players have bad moments in life, it affects a player, and you can see it on the pitch. Like the way they play, you can see it. Especially Rashford. Rashford had before he had had this incident, um, in the Euros, right? That racial incident. So he got affected on that. He never played good ball. Then after that, he started playing. But yeah, like all that, all those things. Like, if we have, you know, good leadership around players, like young players, especially young players. You know, we have players that you know they're inexperienced players. You know, only one or two players love to go home and chill and do whatever they want. Others they go club. Maybe where can they go outside and go do whatever they want? The young players. They will go do and have fun. You know, I understand that. That's life. Everyone wants to do that, but like it comes back to self discipline. We don't have players that have discipline, man. It's, and if we get you no know, play like coaches like John Terry, like as an assistant or like a backup as a coach to just coach these guys on the side and tell them like, okay, football works like this, like this. You know they gain a little bit of experience for them, you know, because we we have a lot of bunch of young players that just, you know, they're not well disciplined. Well, they are, you know, they are, but some of them they're not really disciplined in football. So, yeah, it will it will, it will take time though. Um, Strasbourg, um, Strasbourg, well, they, I don't think they're going to get relegated, to be quite honest. They got like a seven or eight points, you know, clear from the relegation zone. But um, they've been finding ways to win since um, Vieira been switching his formation. And I think Santos been playing the few last few games, you know, for them that um, I'm surprised that we didn't keep him because he, he's balling in their midfield. You know, he's more physical than Enzo Fernandez. I'm sorry about the Enzo Fernandez lover, you know, because Enzo Fernandez is a Chelsea player and I'm going to support all Chelsea player. But for me, you know, Santa Santa's going to be a better midfielder for me than um, Enzo Fernandez in the future because he's quicker and he, is, he, he can win, he can tackle, he can read the game. It's not only the attacking part of his game. It's good defensively. You know, he's more solid defensively than Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez, for me, with the, with the passing ability, you know, is a little is a little bit better. But for me, you know, put both together, I'm going to say that Santos is going to be a better midfielder in the future if he continually get, get developed in the right way. You know, he's going to be ball. But I don't know why that we didn't keep him and we keep on complaining about Enzo and um, and Caicedo being tired. You know, that's your that's your backup and you get rid of it. So I don't want to complain from Pochettino because I know that he have a say where he could have said at least keep Santos because he used him in preseason. So I know he saw what the kid capable of. Yes. Uh, to be honest with you, so like, no, I've been saying this since um the second half or well, the first half of the season that Enzo Caicedo don't work. It does those two in the midfield don't they don't work, you know. And I, I see why you say uh Santos will be better than Enzo because Santos is more physical than Enzo. Enzo's actually. Well, it's physical, but like in terms of like his movement wise, guys, Enzo's actually slow. So it's basically like I see him as a deep line player. He plays like a six to me. He plays like a provider. 
that's what Enzo Fernandez does for me. He's like, assess Fabricas that sits deep. Or uh, Sergio Busquets, rather, but I could say he's like that. That's Enzo Fernandez for me. But like, he just sits deep. And with, with if he, if um, Santos comes in, then Pochettino can push Santos to an eight, where he can push Santos to go a bit further and go link up with other players on the outside, on the uh, up front, where Enzo will drop deep and just uh, provide balls from switching the balls from one area to another from different flags. That's what I want. But the way Poch uses, like, I just, I just, there will be games where Poch will put Enzo as a 10. <laughs> He'll put Enzo as an 8. He'll put Caicedo as a 6. We all know Caicedo can't play 6. He's an 8. This guy's an 8. No, and that's why um, I wanted Lavia to be back because Lavia can play behind those two guys. If Lavia comes back, he can play behind uh, Caicedo, then Enzo can play on the eight position, dropping deep with Gallagher. Gallagher can go press 10. No. But there's a problem between those two midfielders. They they, they don't have physicality, man. It's that those two at the midfield, it doesn't work, man. It just doesn't work. And right. you know, I keep saying this. And I just like people don't see it. Well it's okay if people like some people really think, you know, Caicedo will turn around. Just like guys, come on, man. Casero won't ball like that if he doesn't have a player behind him. They need a player behind him in order for him to play the way he played at Brighton. They need someone behind him. Even Enzo. With Enzo, he needs someone with him because he can play behind as well. So, so like those two, they're just, hey, he's talking about them. <laughs> They don't match, and that's where Santos come in because, you know, believe it or not, you know, Santos is more as a defensive midfielder, you know, than, than all those three that we uh, we talk about because when he played for Brazil, his country, he is he, that's where he play. He play right in front of the the, the, the defense. You know, he, he, he control because he's good on tackle. Sometimes I see him play as a C, CDM, you know, um, there, the way I would be taking the, the, the ball from the defenders, most of the time he drop back in and form, you know, that that's the way how we play. And he's a more defensive midfielder to me. And he's a good box-to-box -box midfielder because he do score a lot of goals. You know, if you if you really, really check his game, he do score a lot of headers too. You know, he, he's a little sneaky player, like box-to-box. -box. He can do that. He can play that side of the game too. So I think that's where we, um, we, we, we misjudge, you know, this young player because he's just coming into the league. So I guess that we were looking at it and said that he need to get a, a point to the European League. But a good player is going to just always be a good player. You know, um, as, as, as um, Sir Alec Ferguson used to say, you know, it doesn't matter the age. Once you're good, you're good. And I think Santos is a player that we should have kept to at least help the team because he wastes all those times at Nottingham Forest. And I'll uh, switch moneymaker saying, uh, you know, um, with Lavia, for real, I... I don't, we don't know what kind of injury he got for him to just rule out, you know, so early, you know, didn't even get a chance to at least play one game. They just ruled him out. Who paid, who paid 50 million for this guy? Oh, jeez, bro. Yo, Southampton Finestas, who paid 50 million on a DM? But okay, I understand because um, Lavia was playing a lot of games last season with Southampton. He had so much games. He even played um, in the League Cups as well. Even in uh, Carabao Cup too, plus FA Cups, so we had a lot of games. 
So I understand why he's injured. I understand. Yeah, as a player, like you, you should need rest. Like you can't play more than forty games in a season, bro. You need rest, bro. Like you get tired, you get burnt out, bro. You no, know, there's a point in time you need rest. So I don't feel like sorry for him. I don't you know, but like I said, so like we. Like rich money makers said, we have too many eights. So we have too many players that play an eight. We need a six, man. We need a. That's why, like, I don't understand why we sold Kante, bro. If we, it could have made sense if we sold Kante this season. This we didn't season, sell Kante. I understand why we. Had, we didn't sell Kante. Did he go for free? He go for free, yeah. Did he go for free? He go. Oh, for free. Why did we let him go, man? Ah. Oh. He was oh, ready to sign. He a was new our only up. six. But the owners and he was, was our to only six. Yo. But we need to find like a proper six for those two guys. Because our club relies on Enzo and Casado. I don't rely on those two guys. Unless there's someone playing behind them. That I'll do. Okay. No one is playing behind them. It's double pivot. Our formation is two, four, two, three, one. That's our formation. Double pivot with ends of Casero. It's not going to work. Definitely look on. Two defenders that two defenders there. One that drops deep can't defend. One that it plays like an eight. Also can't defend. Also doesn't have physicality. How are you going to uh compete with one of the big uh Midfielders like Rodri, like De Bruyne, like uh, McAllister, like uh, who's hot right now, like uh, Sobesly. How you going? man? You see, so like I, I just don't get the formation. Also, Poch, I don't, I don't get what he's trying to do. I saw a video of him busy explaining how he wanted to put, but. Like his formation, I was just like, "Hey, it's Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, um, I I didn't want to hit it on you, but we don't even Pochettino to be quite honest. But um, you know, we we make we make a lot of bad decision, you know, um, by rushing a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, because Conte could at least. You know, stay to help gradually these midfielders in because Conte was coming off a lot of injury. And, you know, if he was going to go for free, we could at least offer him another year or two, a two year contract. He would have willing to stay t- with Chelsea because Conte is the most humblest player that you can ever think um, of. You know, he would have really, really stay, you know, if we did offer him another year or two year contract. You know, let him know that, you know, he wasn't going to play much game time unless he can prove that he was going to stay fit. You know, but imagine you got a Conte right now sitting beside a Caicedo and an Enzo Fernandez. That that, that midfield would have worked because Conte is an engine. And Caicedo could have learned off Conte, you know, and we would have been in a better um, situation, to be quite honest. I think we would have been up there right now, you know, looking about in the top four. You know, but those are the mistakes that we made. And, you know, it's already gone. It's too late. So I'm not going to sit here and um, talk about it or complain about it. You know, yeah. but it's just what we're going to do in the future. You know, that's my biggest concern. Of what's, what we're going to do for the future. You know, that that's mm-hmm. that's where my, my, my mind is right now. Is for next season, the future. And for the future begin for me is, as the season ends. I want to see what my team able of doing. You know, I want my team to start to start to make make moves. You know, to 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 um to to, to the mistakes that they made um to rectify these mistakes. You know, and this is the last chance they got for me to rectify all the mistakes. So they have to go in early. You know, to 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 show the fans. You know that we're trying. At least, you know, if you're not, even though you're not saying much, but at least show us that you are listening or you care. So, like, no, it's it's just too much to bear right now. 
It it is like these players they 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 just need someone around them. I don't know. I thought Sterling would do something. Thiago Thiago Silva's trying, but hey, it looks like he's failing. He's the only guy. He's the only leader amongst all the men out there in that squad that's trying to do something yet they're not listening to. But no, I get it. Because he's older than them and they're younger. So it's different, you know, different uh, energy. Just diff- They're just different alongside, you know, the generation. So, like, I just... From now, like, I don't know, like, going forward, I I just don't know. In terms of the players who we're bringing in, you know, there's some, there's some specific areas are still, like, they still need to be fixed. The left side still needs to be fixed. The left back area, people don't even touch about that. Look at where our goals are being conceded, guys. From the left side, guys, from the left area. That's where most of our goals are being considered, especially from the left side and the center. Well, from the center areas because of Disasi mistakes or one of the center backs that do a mistake. <laughs> but most of the time, our con- when we consider goal, it comes from the left side of an area. That's where our problem is. Our left side is a problem. Our right side is, is good because we have two players that can play wing, that can play flag. We have Gusto. And we have Palmer. Palmer can also drop. Palmer drops back and defends. That's actually good about Palmer. I like that. He drops back, it defends. Okay. But on our left side, okay, we have Modric. Yeah, he drops, but he really doesn't like defend. We have Kukurela. Yes, there will be games you defend, but uh, we have Chile as well. We also know Chile well as well. And we also know about Prada Sterling as well. <laughs> you see, our left side, man, like, our left side is a problem, number one. Our, send, our DM, we still have a DM problem. We never fixed the DM problem. People think we fixed the D. We didn't fix the DM problem. We never fixed the midfield problem. There's still a problem. We still need a, a six. We still need a proper six. A guy that can do dirty work, like a Thomas Party guy, is six. There. And we need a striker. You know, all these problems still, we, we bought players trying to fix this problem, and there's still problems. And it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no way, there's, it's just no point of return. Like, where are we going from here? If we get players, like if we get a strike, we get awesome man, right? Yeah, we get him. Does that fix our problem to what, what we have at the back? We still have problems at the back. Right now, it's yo, we can see that hey, we still need a... Since Thiago Silva's leaving, we need a new center uh, back now. We need another center back, a prolific center back. You see, that's another problem. And if... Uh, since now uh, Petrovic got number one, uh, Sanchez might also like, consider leaving because he because oh, he, he thought can, he was gonna be. He can he go. Thought, I would yeah. love him to tell him. Uh, <laughs> like, he's, see, not good, he's not good enough. He's not good enough because he actually signed a contract thinking his first choice. Now he's not. He's no more first choice for Chelsea. So we need to buy another goalkeeper. <laughs> For Petrovic, the because thing, the only thing I can oh. say about Sanchez, what I used when I saw him just come in, that I did like, you know, he is good to come and claim crosses, you know. But when he started put the ball at his feet, it's kind of give you a heart attack, to be quite honest. Exactly. You know, if I can, if if I can get Petrovic to be claiming crosses, you know, for me, you know, I would say, yeah, we have a, a good goalkeeper. That's the only problem I got with Petrovic is the. It give me a little bit of um, uh, cap of vibes, you know, uh, not good on, on claiming crosses, but Petrovic is better of, of, of saving shots and Kappa don't, you know. So all the keepers that we got have some form of fault, you know, but if you can put all your fault, they, they, they strength together and, and give it to one, you know, we'll have a world-class goalkeeper. 
So I I I'll give Petrovic time, no, but yeah, I'll give him time. But like I said, like we still have problems. <laughs> yeah. We still have problems at the back. <laughs> What do you think about what Rich Money Maker is saying right here? You can, I don't know if you can see the comment. Uh, Which one? The one that says Podge. Podge has told. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The Arsenal project, you know, you think Chelsea fans will be that patient? <laughs> Bro, like, listen, like, okay. With Project, bruh. I expect project to go within five years, four or five. I understand. I understand the project, bro. Like sometimes it can take 10 years for the project to work. Right. But if I see a coach, bro, when I see a coach that's failing to make a project work, come on, man. Whose fault is it? Like, guys, think about it. Like, sir, so, okay. Let's, let me give you a different scenario in terms of no football. Let's say you hire a maid or you hire someone that you want to do a job for, right? You give this person a job. He fails you eight times in a row. He fails tomorrow. He fails another day. He fails another. He con consistently he fails. He fails. He fails. He fails. He fails. Wouldn't you get tired of that and fire him? You will do that. You will do that. That's it's just human nature. It's it's just like that. So I just don't get like how I have to be patient with someone that's just keep failing. It doesn't make sense. Bro, with us and Venga, I understand because with him, he had a different outlook on bro. Us and Venga was not meant to like make Arsenal great. He was just he was meant to build, he was meant to build Arsenal. That was his job. Just to Bring Arsenal to where they're at. That was Arsene Wenger's job. Arsene Wenger's job was just to build Arsenal. That time when Arsene Wenger came in, Arsenal wasn't really that big club. That's where he brought all those good players. Terry Andre, um, Dennis Begnam, all those guys. Uh, Pastris Vieira, all those guys, bro. All those ballers, bro. All those guys. David Simon, all those guys, bro. But, like, all that point was just to bring where Arsenal is at right now. That was Arsene Wenger's project, bro. The time we was coming third place, fourth place, that was youth project. That was all about just to bring the next generation. Because it did that because the club were also building Emirates, right? So that thing was just a project. That was Asim Wenger's thing, bro, right? We can't compare us to Ateta. No, we can't, bro. We can't do that because we have our own standard of project, bro. Man, I don't want our project to be compared to Arsenal's project. Man said, no, I don't want that. I want our project to be our own project. And if I fail to see a football manager that can resonate to this project, that can give me results consistently to this project, and you're still going to give him a chance, it's like this guy doesn't give you, he takes you to a cup final doesn't give you a cup you still gonna give him a chance to take you to another cup final and he loses and you're still gonna give him another year that doesn't make any sense it doesn't bro it doesn't make any sense it's like you you just setting up you're setting us up for more failure it doesn't make any sense it doesn't you know it just it, it, it just makes me like sometimes question things about Chelsea Football Club and how they run things and how they do things behind the scenes. Like, what, what do they say to these managers? What do they do to these managers? You know, it, it just makes me question things like, like, what's going on? You know, I don't blame Podge. Podge is a good, you know, he's a good manager. He has his times, man. Like, he... You know, we, we've seen his uh, his uh, criteria and we've seen his manager list, bro. We see who, which club he has coached before. We've seen all that. We've seen what he did at Spurs. We've seen what he did at PSG. He won trophies at PSG. But like I said, so like I have to explain to you now, if I see someone that's been failing consistently in my club and it's a project, you fail, like, okay, you fail one year, 
what if he fails the next year? What if next year doesn't win again? You guys are gonna give him another chance. Nah, bro. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's why I don't. I never compare pro- our project to other clubs' project because it's not like that. It's different. It's different. Totally different. Between Arsenal, Arsenal had a different time when they had their project. They had a different time. Same with Manchester City when they had a project in 2009, 10. No, 2000, 2008, 7. The time when they hired Mark Hughes and all those guys before they had the, before they hired the the um, Arabian owners. Before they had the owners where they bought Jekyll and all those guys, the bought Aguero, all those guys, they bought all those guys to win the league. Before all that, they had a project. And their project was to bring Man City to where it is right now. That's it. And right now, the owners, what they're doing is to bring Chelsea where they want it to be. And that's future. So our project is different, bro. It's like different. So it's, it's like, it, like I'm just, you know, with like the way they give this guy chances after chances. Pochettino, like they give him chances after chance. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, when is this guy going to go, bro? Like, please, bro, like, if just to save his life, he, he got to go. He's not he's not right for it. He's not. Against Sheffield, when he used Gallagher as left wing, that's when I was like, you know, I'm over it. <laughs> you know, to see Gallagher playing at left wing and you got Modric on the bench. You know, that 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 was that was a, 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 sh- a shoot in the foot for me, you know. Yeah, he shot me in the foot right there because I never expect, I never expect that at all. Yeah. He's so like, the thing is with Graham Potter, I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. If Graham Potter turned up all his games, I'm sure we'll still have Graham Potter right now. Like I'm sure right now, because he's the type of manager that knows project very well. He knows project, so. I'm sure right now we'll be in a better position with him. It's just that he had dead players around him. He just had dead players that were not fit enough to play. Some players didn't want to play for Chelsea. There's some players that want to need, they wanted to leave. Havertz wanted to leave. Mount wanted to leave. All those guys, uh, Kovovic wanted to leave. Kovi wanted to leave. Um, all those guys, they wanted to leave. Mendy wanted to leave. All those guys. So when you have players, all players, like almost 37, 38 players, bunch of players, they're unsettled, you're going to have problems. So I understand Potter's situation. You know, I, let, but, me give you, let me give you a little story, right? Um, you know that when I used to play, um, we used to got two teams that's from the same the same place as us. Like, but you can, there is a bigger team. It would be like us and Fulham, like Chelsea and Fulham. So it would have been my team would have been like the Fulham and Chelsea would have been like that team. So what that team will do, like every single season, you know, um after we um we 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 go undefeated one season where we um uh, we go straight to this the the, 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 the semifinal undefeated, you know, and um, what they did is they take all the best players that we got you know all of the best players leave and go to that team so what we did at what we my team have to do is get about i think i would about 10 or about 11 signing new signing and uh to be quite honest that here we were we were saved by the bell by a goal difference not to get relegated and honestly it i know so i do understand the reason why, you know, mismatching new players into into a project, I know it do take time, you know, because by experience, and it didn't happen on the one year, it happened many years, you know, for 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 me to really sit there and see because I was a captain and I didn't want to leave that team anyway because that team was good to me. And we constantly have to rebuild. You know, after a couple of seasons, we constantly have to rebuild. And every time that we, re- we rebuild, we go close to relegation. And I know that, you know, it takes time. It do takes time. So 
it's just we don't patient enough because we understand, um, you know, Chelsea being successful. But we're not fighting a relegation battle right now. You know, we're fighting to be in Europe. So that's where I would say to the fans, you know, um, give it to the end of the season. And if next season we, we have this core player, because this core player ain't going nowhere. You know, and if these core players don't find a way, you know, how to be consistent, then we can start thinking worry that some of these players are not good enough. Or maybe some of these players, not saying they're not good enough, but they just don't fit the system that you're trying to build. So that time, we're going to have to start of think of get rid of some of these players. But for me, you know, I'm not – I, I don't – I did I, – I definitely don't reach my breaking point yet. You know, probably next season when I will really reach there because I grow through this experience in real life. You know, so I'm not here sitting and talking because I, and because I, I haven't go through it. I'm just start to talk. I have been through it. So I know we're going to take patience. No, I I still believe uh, because this this is like they say project. No, <laughs> I still believe, I still believe that somehow somehow this team will turn around. No, we just don't have bad games for no reason, man. No, we just don't have bad seasons for no reason. I just think we, we need a different midfield profile, though. I just think exactly. We need a- we need to find a match in the midfield, something that works, because Enzo and um, Kai Sado just not working at the moment. It, 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 it never worked, sir. Like, it never. Like, putting two eights in double pivot, two, okay, two eights, right, in, in both sides of, one side of the midfield and the other side of the midfield. Two players that are, have the same qualities. Between them, they're playing alongside. It's not going to work. You know? Why can't we have someone like Kante behind Sas Fabricas? That was working, man. Sas Fabricas can do whatever they want because he knew hey, someone at the back is going to do the dead to work. Now, we don't have a player like that, we have Enzo Caicedo, they don't know who's going to do it, that's what, you know, so, like, like the whole setup, I, I, I think, me, what I see is like, the way the manager sits in the team, or is the way the players are playing, but the way the structure is, it's, it's horrible, I'm it's gonna honestly, tell you it's horrible, so. I kind of think I kind of think that we're probably going to beat um Crystal uh Everton because Enzo is injured. And it's sad to say but um anytime that Enzo don't really play you just notice the difference. Who play you know, boy, yeah. Probably, probably <laughs> going to have to sit sit deeper and that's what that's what we're lacking in the midfield. We lack of of speed with strength and that's what Gallagher bring. You know, and Avagali go sit beside um beside Kaiseido, give you a better a better balance, you know, because Galiga can Galiga can 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 get a van up and down the pitch. Galiga is not a, a wing player. So that's uh-huh. where we've been um, we've been lacking. But right now I think it's gonna be better for us. Yeah, I think I think Gallagher on double pivot is I also don't trust him there. Um, England, I think I saw him play that position in, for England. Hey, I, he had a bad game. I, <laughs> I, Gallagher, I, I don't know. Like, hey, so, hey, man, ah, man, if Enzo's injured, then I, I'm sure, uh, who's this? Isn't, uh, Cassidy gonna get a first start though? Yeah, Cassidy. Um, oh, Cassidy, sir. Oh, yeah. oh, he's he's fit, but Pochettino haven't trusted him enough to start, which I don't know why, you know, because he's he's very physic he's very physical, you know, and that's what we've been lacking, you know. Um, but over there with Leicester, you know, since he left Leicester, Leicester been struggling, and he was getting game times over there. To be quite honest, he was making a lot of assists, and he was scoring a few goals too. So. 
I don't know what's going on right there. Yo, if if <laughs> even Pochettino is probably I, uh, you know what? But um, I I won't blame him. Probably he he has his way of his own football. That's just how you know people are. They have their own way of doing things. So uh, I I just don't know. But I I prefer Cassidy in that position. That Gallagher. Um, Poch make a speech. Um, uh, in a in an interview that is saying it's time to trust the young players, you know, because he know he make a mistake because he should have get a right back or use Shalaba in the right back position against um Sheffield United because Disasi is definitely don't comfortable. I always tell you guys this: Disasi is not a comfortable defender defending wide. You know, he's a more defender. He like to stay on the inside because if you notice, he can he can cover. Um, back his mistake when he's inside, but once he get he got beaten outside, there's no coming back for him. So he don't like to defend wide at all. And Shalba is a is a is a player that can play right as a as a C, CDM a center back, and he can play also as a right back because he's done that many many times in his career. So I don't know why Pochettino keep on mismatching these players and you know put them in the wrong places. I say when you have someone that loves to put Colwell left back, say, hey, sh- <laughs> you see, I these are the things I'm just I'm just saying this, you know, I'm just gonna say this. This is the guy that put Messi at CDM. He put Messi at CDM at PSG. At, at PSG. So I uh, um I don't like I said, you no know, Pochettino has his own ways of doing his own things. If he wants a a, a a center back, a right back, I don't know what he sees. He sees different. <laughs> he sees different. Because with me, I, I, I prefer center backs to be in their natural positions than use wing backs as right backs. If you have wingers and you have right wingers, left wingers, use them as wing backs. Convert them to wing backs if you don't have wing backs. But hey, no, but uh, it's just it is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah. Oh, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, I think that we um at least I know we didn't need the money. For real, but I think even Ruben lost a sheep, you know, we could have kept this season, you know, because he would have been doing, he would have been doing wonders sitting right there beside, um, you know, uh, Caicedo. But I think we make, um, we, we sell some of those players too quickly, which we did really need the money anyway. And some of them did really need new challenge, you know, but I think that um, at least Ruben, we could have kept Ruben, you know, if we know that Kovacic was going, and and all of that, you know, at least we could have keep on Ruben or or Conte. I think that's the where we make um that big mistake. To be quite honest, because Ruben lost the cheap. You know, uh, it's so funny that all these players since they left Chelsea, they never have been injured anymore. Yeah, it's sad reality to witness. Yeah, like this. Um, I'm surprised. Um. Loftus Chick is now getting a lot of game time at AC Milan, that which is crazy because when he was with us, he would get injured. So <laughs> mm, it it comes down to hey, what's really going on with the head physio with our staff? Like, how do they train these boys? Hey, man, like if Kante is also not getting injured that side. I don't know about Pulisic. Pulisic's injury prone player. I just know he's gonna get injured. There's gonna be a month he'll get injured. I I know Pulisic. I know Pulisic. I've never even at Borussia Dortmund. There are uh, there were incidents when I watched his uh, time management where he was at Dortmund. I think he got injured like several times. Uh, Pulisic is an injury prone player. As, oh, I'm not cutting you. As which money maker? Um say about Cowell, uh the news was pop up that this sassy and enzo is out you know Cowell returns 
We don't know if he's going to start, but I heard he's returned, so I don't know if he returned to start. You know, so that's a that's a that's a plus. I oh, as I said earlier, I don't like to hear that Chelsea players got an injury, but I just think that the Caicedo and um and uh, Enzo they're trying their hard to let it fit, but I don't think it it it, it worth it though. Yo, it's crazy. This I see injured. Damn. <laughs> Yo, I think Telepa and uh, Silva will start tomorrow because I doubt Kowal will start. If he comes back from injury, I doubt he'll start. He'll probably oh. finish the game, but I doubt he'll start, though. Um, Rich Bonimanko is asking a question. Let me ask, um, we did adjust this earlier um, in, the se- um, in the show that um, what we think about Eddie L. Eddie is a, is a man to build a project just like Pochettino. You know, he can get the best out of his um, players. He knows how to organize a team. So for me, you know, if I'm going to go for for someone for probably a year or, or so, you know, who I know will, will, will push the team, you know, at least to top four. But Eddie is not a man that's going to take us over the line. You know, that's just my honest opinion on Eddie But, um, would I take him if there is no other choice? If Pochettino have to go, and we cannot attract the rest of big names that we really want to attract, Eddie would be a man that I would consider, you know, as a as a gap fill, but not as a man that to lead us over the line, because I know he can build a a team. For me, he's a little bit better than Pochettino to building a team because you can see an identity. You know, from him, how his team set up. And I know he know how to get the best of young players. And he's not afraid to use young players either. But for me, he wouldn't be my number one, my number one choice. It's just if we do not have another alternative. Uh, oh, Eddie Howe, guys. Uh, so you're right. Eddie Howe, guys, now, nah, guys. <laughs> He's a project guy, so he's not going to go beyond. I don't think he'll go much further than project. Nah. He will, he will succeed at, like, real building and all that. But going further, nah. I don't see him doing that. But, hey, who knows? Maybe he'll do it. Cause, um, I, but I, what I like about he, um, he brought... Put the best out of the players. Players, he brought the best out of Gordon. You've got the best out of Isaac, Emeron, Bruno. Got the best out of these players, and they're still young. So, yeah, they they he's actually good at like real building players. Uh, he's good at projects, rebuilding a team. He's actually good at that. I like that about Eddie Howe. But in terms of competing, like nah, he's not. I don't think he's at that level. Nah. Oh uh, yeah, um, coach did send me a list. I was send me something. Um, coach Chiller said was saying was saying something about something new that he was doing on his child on his channel. So I was just um, here trying to read it to make sure I get it get it right so I can talk about it a little bit. So you can go ahead. You can take over the show for me for a second. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um... I'm just going to read the comments. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Um, Rich Money Maker said we did contact Conte's agent, but Conte likes our team. But he would want three experienced players to take his job. Lol. Mm. Uh, I don't know, bro. Like, I really don't know if Conte really wants to coach this team, bro, because Conte doesn't really need I think it needs more than three players' experience, bro. But I don't think Conte would want Petrovic starting, want Tisasi starting, want uh, Gallagher starting. Ah, bro, come on. We know Conte by now, bro. Like, I don't think he want this player starting. So if we really get Conte, right, let's make sure this guy gets his players. That's what I want. If he gets his players, then it'd be all right. But that's another um, job that's going to be 
you know, dealt with behind the scenes because we already know what type of character Antonio Conte is. He's an Italian guy, so Italians also age. They have a temper. So, you know, so we just wait and see how things go with, you know, the managers and all that stuff, bro. Because everything, bro, even at the back, bro, center back, midfield, center, bro, there's problems. Left wing, there's problems. Left back, there's problems. Center back, there's problems. DM, there's a problem. Aye, bro. Aye. When are we when are we gonna stop rebuilding? From three years from now, when are we gonna stop rebuilding and compete? Because we've been rebuilding. Aye, it's a crisis, man. It's a crisis. It's really a crisis. So. But I, we just have to wait and see how you know things turn out with this football club. But yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, with Conte, um, for me, I uh, think he's in the same boat like Jose Moreno. I, I think that the game has changed, you know, and these young players now can, cannot co-op with, um, with Conte and this Jose Moreno. You know, um, it's going to have to be more like uh, one of the new style managers, to be quite honest. But Conte and... And Jose Moreno is the only manager right now, I think, that can really, you know, take down club. Um, not club, Pep, to be quite honest. Because to beat Pep, you have to you have to play your own style of game. And everyone is trying to play like, like Pep Guardiola. And why would you want to play like Pep Guardiola with something that he study and master? He know how to he know how to, to, to build it and he know how to break it. You know, so for me, that would be stupid. For other managers trying to trying to um, to reminisce what Pep Guardiola built, you know you can't beat a master on his own game, you know. So for me, it's 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 the way we have to look at it. Like Conte would be good for us, you know. Um, with his defense, with the players that we got, Conte can get the best out of them, organizing. And everything like we would be better organizing defensively, and you know, and attacking. Conte know how to get his attacking attacker to score goals too. So Conte would be a good shout, you know. Overall, you know, I would say he he, he can be a good shout. What do you think about this one that I put up? Um, it most definitely. If Conte really comes, bro, but like like I said, he he would never want these players. He wants his own players. So if we get him, we must give him his own players. You know, because the time, guys, remember the time we got Conte, we we had a a formation system of four five one. We had two wingers and three midfielders, and that didn't work until he changed his system. Until he told the owners that now nah, he wants to use the system he changed to a back three and put uh we used uh who's this guy it was the second game of the season name? when we lose to arsenal yeah that's where we changed the formation to back three he used um and that time he never had a right wing he never had a right wing back his right wing back was victor moses that's the only winger he had a proper right winger he had victor moses and at the left the only proper left winger he had was uh, what's his man? I forgot his name. Number three, um, Mark Alonso. Uh, Mark Alonso, yeah, Marcos Alonso, yeah. That's his only wing back he had, right? And he utilized it, and it was brilliant about it. He utilized that thing, and he said, "Okay, I have three proper centre backs. I have Espelicueta at the back. I have John Terry. I have Cahill, sorry Cahill, and I have uh." Was this Louise? Those guys. I have them at the back, experienced. Then I have two proper wing backs. So he utilized that, and he had Matic, and he had two proper pivot players, and Kante. Then he had, uh, uh, we had Costa in the front, and we had Hazard, Villain. So like, the way like his system has to be built on experienced players, not just. Um, project players 
if it comes to this team, it's not going to work the way he wants it to work. Because there's there's other positions where he wants his players to really play like this type of play or not. And if you get players that they won't play his type of ball, then you know how Antonio Conte is, guys. We know how he is. He's a short temper guy. So hey, I a manager like that. I think with um <laughs> Morati Sari. Sari is better. I think Sari will be better than Antonio Conte because Sari plays possession, uh, possession football. Like, I'm not saying he will be, like, more better than... Nah, I'm not saying he could be replaced, but I'm saying for, like, just to get where we can go further, I think Sari ball will be better because some people said Sari ball was boring ball. Like, I remember that time when we had Sari and we never had... We had Higuain and all those guys, and nah, we didn't expect. Never had a good season. But he took us to third position, and he took us to Carapa Cup final. Like, people forget that. He actually gave us good games. People actually forget that. So, like, with Sari, like, I actually prefer Sari with Antonio Conte because Sari can use these players and get his players within. But with Antonio Conte, he would want his players and most of his players you want must be experienced. So it'll be difficult, bro. It'll be difficult to like really bring him in and it'll be difficult, trust me. Yeah, um, when you said um for, for it's a fact because um you know um sorry like his tight his midfielder, you know, the just uh, Enzo is similar to, to Jorginho. So I think I think it would work, you know, if if we if we do get um get a get a, a sorry and you know I think I think it I think it will work for us. But we got some good talented player. It's just if these players can stay fit, you know, and if these players player can 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 be consistent, if these player next season can can give us a run like like a Gallagher. You know, a Reese James and can give us a at least a a, a three quarter season. You know, we we can see a lot of a lot of a lot of progress next season. Doesn't matter who the manager is. That's just in my opinion. But we're just gonna need because we're scoring goals, so we can't just sit here and say like goal scoring is our problem. You know, the defense is more slightly our problem right now because we do score goals, but we do concede. Goals. We can't tell when last we finish a game without without putting the ball in the back of the net, you know. So every team that we come up against, we scoring. So that to show you that that progress is there with the goal scoring part. It's just the defensive part is a big issue right now for me. You know, um, if we can find a way out to keep clean sheet, if that is to get get a better D, DM, you know, or to better defense defender. For me, not even a striker is the problem to me right now. Like how we were complaining in the beginning of the season that we do need a striker. I know that none of us can sit here and say that um, we're here in the media for a long while now that Chelsea need a centre forward. Like It's been a while since I heard someone really say something about us needing a striker. Like The only thing people have been saying right now is our defence and midfield. You know, so we, we find a way to score a goal, but we find a way to concede goal. So once we can close that, that gap, you know, and put it into one unit, I think I think I think we will be in a better place. That is true. Spot on no, like but like I said, like I I just want um this team to ball man. I always wanted this team to ball this season. I I I expected something different. So like this season, ah man, I, I expected at least maybe six sixth place, seventh, six. I I'll be fine with that, man. Six fifth, I'll be fine totally. Not this, like you know. And talking about Kante, bringing Kante, bringing Sari, all this elite managers when we have players when they have players all around like those type of players the players that we have now compared to the players we had back then they were like okay they were 
a bunch of players that were ready to compete. Now we have players that they just want to learn. It's a project. They want to learn first, then compete. Okay, then if you bring elite managers to that system, it's not going to work because them, they want players that want to compete. And they will, and to bring those players, some some of the players, they won't meet Chelsea profile because there's some elite players don't like Chelsea profile. No, we, we've recently, since that took our era, there was a time where Haaland was linked to Chelsea and we never got Erling Haaland. He was linked to Chelsea when we won Champions League. He was linked to Chelsea. Even before then, I'm saying, we, yeah. get, him Dubai. we get him to buy when he was like, I think, 17 years old, when he was still over there playing for um, see. for that team. Uh, I don't remember the team name where Frank Lampard told him to sign him and Drew Bellingham too. You know, so we get a chance to sign all these young players. That's what I was saying, that... um. I'm not going to blame these owners because we could have a few experienced players right now in Erling Allen, Drew Bellingham, you know, um, uh, that guy at Real Madrid. You know, I can't remember his name. Tremaine, Tremaine, even. Tremaine, you know, Declan Rice. Look, look at that. Musiala, Musiala, sir. Hey, Jesus. Musiala, oh yeah, we made Musiala slip out of her hands because mm. we didn't want to give him game time, you know. So look, look at all these players that um like slip to her hand. Look at my my Gaye. you know, he's a better be- better defender right now than um than Balia Shealy or exactly. together, you know, even um Tomori. Tomori is even a better defender than all of them. So we get all these players that slip through our hands where we could at least, you know, have a, have a solid structure. If they did give Frank Lampard the, the, the keys that he need, we would have we would have built something. You know, I don't think Chelsea would have been fall off on the Frank Lampard. Probably Frank Lampard would have still be Chelsea manager today. You know, so I won't even blame Lampard and say that Lampard is a bad manager because look at everything. Everything is no better since Frank Lampard lived there. So, you know, I'm gonna. I heard a lot of people being saying that Lampard is not a good manager, but Lampard, we were playing good on the Lampard even when we made the um, the Champions League when we get the chance for Ben. Like all these players was doing good, well on the Frank Lampard. You know, so I can see a lot of progress there. You know, we did have a lot of progress to be quite honest, and he take the job when nobody else. They did really, really want it, and it, it did really well. For me, Frank Lampard did really well. It's just Everton, he made the, the when he, he go to Everton and it just didn't work. You know, then he come back from then he come back, you know, and then we we um we were under we were under um so much um you know turmoil where we can we we gonna sit there and say oh Lampard is a bad manager. Lampard is not a bad manager. You know, I, for a fact, I can say that Lampard have nothing to do with everything. He keep them from relegation. But you can, right now, we all can look in the rearview mirror and we can say that everything got a lot of problem there. A lot of problem. Everything. Yo, got there. too many. Why too do you many? think Keller, Keller yeah, and Chilotti no never succeeded, guys? Look at Sean Dice. Sean guys. Dice is struggling right now with everything the same way. <laughs> Carlo, you know, when Lampard come Lord back team. the last time, come look on. at the amount of problems we, we got in our in the dressing room. You know, mm-hmm. what Lampard could have do, we can't do nothing at all to that team. You know, no one could have helped out that team. No one could have saved that team. So I don't go into narrative with people and say Lampard is a bad manager. Lampard is not a bad manager. You give Lampard young players that he need, he can make something out of it. Look what he did at Derby. You know, he showed that he he, he he know he know how to manage team and he know how to get the best of young players. But we didn't the board didn't give him what he need. And right now those four players are the four top players across in the world right today. Truly Manny is one of the best defensive midfielder right now in the world. Declan Rice is one of the best defensive midfielder in the world. Drew Bellingham is one of the top midfielder in the world. Erling Allen is a top striker in the world. That's four. Four world class player we missed out on. Where Frank Lampard told them go get them before the world even know about them. 
You know, so I'm not going to sit here and follow no one uh, agenda saying Frank Lampard is not a good manager. He, he was. It's just the, 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 they just didn't give him the tool that he need. And then he fall out with some of the, with, with the Rudiger and, and players like those. You know, and that's why he lose. That's why he was he, he lose the dressing room because he wasn't giving Rudiger that many game time. So he have to sacrifice to Mori to please Rudiger. You know, and Rudiger, we did already know Rudiger wasn't gonna sign a new contract anyway. Even though we're gonna say, oh, the new board should have should have signed um should have tried to keep Rudiger. Rudiger was gonna go anywhere you take it. Christensen was gonna go. No players got loyalty to club anymore, and that's what our fan base don't get. They follow um rival narrative and fall deep down inside of it and create and create problem for themselves. Like no rival cannot pump me up to go against my team or my club. Like I know for a fact that we got a lot of problems, you know, and those problems are the one that we have today. Thanks. Yeah. Fake with facts. No one's loyal to the club and unless you have a proper legend that's really loyal to the club. But now football now ah, no players loyal to the club. No player. So like as like our fan base, the thing with our fan base, we're just too delusional. Right? We we just see things beyond our measure. Like we just think to the point of not understanding. We need to understand things before we like go to conclusion. Right. So yeah. like it's just you know, like with us, like I was, I was also there once. I was also, also like there was a time where I also thought like me bringing Messi to Chelsea Football Club is gonna help everything. Like I really, when I was young, I really wanted Chelsea to sign Messi. Like I was like, yo, man. like, but it's like the level of delusion, like, like we have as football fans as to what like. We think players will ball for this football club, will stay loyal. You know, my friend, that was my one of my friends uh, said uh, Mason Mount was going to be a Chelsea legend. And I said, OK, I'll give you time. I'll give you if Mason Mount is going to end up being a legend of Chelsea football club. Look now, where's Mason Mount? Man United. You see, so like it just boils down, like never be so attached to football players. Just rather just be attached to a football club and know the value of it and be loyal to the football club rather than be loyal to the ballers. It's okay to have sympathy for football players, but with me now, nah, no, I, I I always put Chelsea first. Nothing. It's always Chelsea first. The players are not above that. It's always Chelsea. And what comes Chelsea, you no, know, what it will be Chelsea, then the players, then the rest will come, you know. But overall, it's Chelsea first. What Chelsea has to come first to me. Chelsea is it has to be the first priority. What and, what's um, needed in this club? You're you know? right. And um, before I cut you, I've got one more point to make on that Rudiger situation, because um, we all know that um, if Frank Lampard, you know, did find a way out to out to out to get Rudiger, you know. Uh, into the team, to be quite honest, we know for a fact that we would have, um, he could have taken us to the Champions League, um, you know, final because Frank Lampard was doing well until December. Notice we were sitting top of the league until in December. That's when he he fall out with Rudiger. So if he didn't fall out with some of those players, you know, that then he fall out with. Because remember, he was because he wanted to get in Declan Rice and a couple other players. He fall out with, with some of the players. I think Jorginho wasn't getting much game either. So he fall out with a few of those players. And that's when things started to go downhill for him. Some of the players stopped playing for him. But imagine if he could have get that right, you know, be a little bit more man management and could have get him on board till the end of the season. Probably he could have taken us to the Champions League final and win it too. You know, because Man City and them, like, they weren't they weren't blowing us away earlier earlier in the season. It's just in that point when Frank Lampard started to fall out with a few of the players. That's when we 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 started to go downhill. The Thomas Tuchel just come in and put his hand around Rudiger and those players wasn't getting in the game. 
and just switch to a back three. That's all they did. Just switch to a back three and take us from the quarterfinal to the final. But Frank Lampard is the one to give to get praise for all those um those wins that they win in the Champions League to take us to the knockout stages. You know, so you know we have to we have to split split justice. You know, we cannot sit here and say that it's only on Thomas Tuchel because I saw a lot of people being saying that, uh, you know, Thomas Tuchel win us the Champions League and, you know, Thomas Tuchel is. But Thomas Tuchel didn't win us the Champions League for the whole entire season. You know, you have to give half of it to Lampard if you have to spit justice because Lampard was the one that, that did the hard part. You know, the hard part was, was sustain the competition for so many games to, to go through the group stages. You know, and Lampard did all of that. So where is the man credit? You know, um, Thomas Tuchel, for me, I'm not saying he's not a good coach, but, you know, I'm going to look at it and say he didn't do much for Chelsea, in my opinion, either, because we never challenged for a Tiger. You know, he did the same job that Lampard did. He take us to some finals and he lost them, just like how Lampard take us to the final and he lost it too. You know, so if we have to split justice, we have to split justice. You know, that's just the way it is. That is true. And in Tuka's success, like um I think Frank Lampard did never got credit of it. Because when Tuka came in, that's when uh Frank made it to the last sixteen and I think he was top I think he was number three and number four before he got sacked four fifth. I'm not sure where he was. But before yeah. he got replaced by Tuka, he was actually doing a actually incredible job it's just that he like like you said he had a fallout with players and when that happens then you have a fallout with just like the whole stuff like everything just becomes toxic then you know then things just everyone just points at you so all the hands are pointed at you because you're a gaffer you're a manager and the manager has to do his job to keep everyone you know secure to keep everyone cool calm collective all that, that's a manager's job. And, you know, frankly, yeah. But, like, all, all to Tuchel's success, yeah, Frank Lepard has to take some credit of it because he did manage to get all our players to that stage where Tuchel had to get all those trophies. If it wasn't for Frank Lampard, I don't think Tuchel was going to win Champions League football. I don't think he was going to win Super Cup. I don't think he was going to you know, reach the cup finals. But, you know, credit to Frank Lepard. Um, with the, when we had him the first season, when we had a transfer bet, credit to him because I I I I was also in in a doubt that we were gonna finish top four. When we finished top four, I was really shocked. And he never bought players too. I was shocked. It's like the Frank Lampard, wow bro, like He's, 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 a, he's a good coach, man. He just needs a good team, a right team for him to build. And when he gets that, I'm sure he'll, he'll establish himself. But, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see with Frank Lampard. Yeah, but you said you're right. You know, um, you're excellent. You're ex yeah, absolutely right. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, um, as fans, like, we go in emotional and we go by what other people are saying are not a rival, but we don't really dig deep, you know, for ourselves and split and split and split it with justice the way I was supposed to split. You know, we all have got our own mind and our own opinion, but, you know, you just have to split the justice. You have to speak the truth, you know, and the truth will always remain, you know, because Frank Lampard did, you know, help us along, along, along the, along, along the, um, along the journey. You know, so why Chelsea fans been saying he's not a good manager? Might as well he's he's he changed to something else. You know, if they did give him all he need, I know for a fact he right now would have Joe Bellingham and all those young players would have been at would have be at Chelsea. Would have have four world class players right now in our rank. Imagine with, with those players with what we're bringing in. You know, Chelsea would have been a force to recommend recommend with in the in the English Premier League. You know, as long as we did have them on good contract and we could have bring in some of these young players now that we bring in to gel to gel in with them, you know, so we would have been in a better situation. 
when Roman left, like the club wasn't in a good situation. A lot of players was out of contract. You know, a lot of players was looking to go through the door. So uh, this these owners come in with all these problems. You know, there was a lot of problems there. Rudiger, Rudiger contract was up. Christian's contract was up. You know, Jorginho contract was going. Um, Kovacic want to go. You know, name it. A lot of these players, Aspilicueta was on was on the last the last leg of, of the road. You know, so we 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 wasn't we wasn't in in a good um stable come um place. You know, so there was changes that they have to make. You know, Conte was 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 overused, was injured. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we all can sit here and point finger and say could have been done better. You know, but we just can't see it. You know, I know we all are crying for Roman, but we have, we have to we have to look at we have to look on fact right here. You know, fact 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 is what matters. And that's just the truth, Rich Money Maker. Like it's just the truth. You know, Frank Lampard is good with young players. If you give Frank Lampard this, this Tabor squad right now, that's Tabor, I know Frank Lampard can get something, a tune out of them. He's not that bad like what people are saying. You know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to say that he's a legend. He's not that he's not that bad as, as what people are saying. It's just when you walk into a toxic situation, you know, just like even relationship. If you're in a relationship and it's toxic, that's gonna that's gonna drain you. Drain your energy. That's drain anyone. You know, no one wants to be in, 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 in those type of situation. That's going to drain everything out of you. So you're 100% right. You know, like Frank Lampard is not that bad like what everyone is saying, to be quite honest. I'm not saying Chelsea have to, should go back and get it. I'm just saying that, um, you know, the way I would to speak about him is just is not fair. And the thing is, we don't give him credit. We don't give him credit, man. And the thing, the one point you made about Everton, right? Like, he had a bet in Everton. It's because of Everton, not him. It's because of Everton. Everton don't have good players. They're, they're bad. Financially, they're bad. And they don't have good players. And they don't have good stadium. And everything's bad. So when you, you come into a football club, that's bad. Especially with Ancelotti. Ancelotti also managed Everton, bro. And he, he tried. Even brought in uh uh Yamis Rodriguez. He brought in all those good players. And they still struggle. In, and they still struggle. Imagine. He brought in players that they wanted and they still struggle. It shows like everything comes from a football club above, beyond, like from the owner going down, that's where like the the foundation is the structure of the. I don't cut you. Is. Just all your points and continue, and look what Ancelotti did after he left Everton. He go on to win the exactly. Champions League. Exactly, he, he went to even won he even won Copa del Rey after yo. It, it it just go boils down to your point of saying it's not manager's fault sometimes. It's sometimes it's a football club. The way they run their football club, it's just how it is. It's like if imagine now Pep Guardiola goes to Everton, you think he'll ball the same way? In, no, definitely not. It would take him years. Probably would take him years to get his players. Yes, it would take him years. But to fix where Everton is right now, like it, he, it's not gonna work. It's not going to, you know. And I give uh Frank Lampard credit because. He brings young players through, like the way he uh, he groomed Mount, he groomed Rhys James, especially Rhys James. Like the way he groomed all those guys, he groomed Chalaba, he groomed uh, Abraham. I don't know why we sold Tammy Abraham. We were never supposed to sell that guy, but yeah, too Carl, it is what it is. Um, he groomed all those guys. Tomorrow, he groom he groomed them. You know. Uh, Frank Lampard is actually good at youth players. He's actually good at scouting youth players. He's very good at that. 
So like um I, I just don't know why people, you know, just go on the bad side of him. Maybe it's because the experience he had with men manager experience he had between, you know, Everton and all that stuff and all that. Yeah, I understand, but like sometimes it's not always the manager's problem, bro. It also comes down to the football club's mentality. They they status wise where they wanna go, you know. If I was also elite manager, I would never take a role at Everton, bro. Never. Even West Ham, all those teams, never. Because I would never... I think, um, who's this? Rafa Panitas did the same thing with Newcastle before they never had money. Never, before they never went, did the uh, billion overtake, take over, the billion takeover. Before that, Rafa Panitas managed Newcastle. And he tried that thing. He tried it. He tried to bring him to the top. He tried. It failed. You know, because they never had a standard, never had a solid foundation. Small teams, you know, like, it also boils down. You know, sometimes not the football cl- It's not the manager. Sometimes it's the football club. So, yeah, if people can really see that as well, see that in 50-50, sometimes not the sometimes. They, I think they'll get to understand football properly. I think in my terms, they'll get to understand football. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, um, it just, it's just a lot. You know, it's just a lot to take in. But some, we have to be honest with ourselves in life, you know. And uh, what you said, man, is really, is really, yeah, it's really, 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 everything is just really match up, you know, because if... If Ancelotti couldn't save them, you know, the Fulham coach was there too. We couldn't save them. Like, name it. So who is Frank Lampard to go over there and save them? You know, just put some respect on the legend name because Frank Lampard is a legend. You know, and he's not a bad manager like what they think or what they're or what people say. You know, if he did leave when he leave Chelsea, if he did go to a different club you know, we're a better structure and everything. Like, a lot of people would be talking good things on his name. You know, it's just unfortunate, as I said, that, that it just didn't work, you know, because Everton was just was just Everton. A lot of a lot of problems. You know, sell all their best players and all of that. I, I also, too, don't want Chelsea to be in that category because... Right now, as like we speaking financially, like I think we're gonna be in a position where we're gonna be starting to sell our best players. So I also don't want Chelsea to go to that route where we're selling Rhys James now. We have to sell H. We have to sell Cole Palmer. Is nah, I don't want that. No. <laughs> yeah. Um... When we cross that road, I know everything they they um all of them been even nothing on Forest, you know, all of them been bringing up Chelsea, but Chelsea case is a different case than what everything um and um and them did, you know. Chelsea case is is more unique because the a, the a, the FA didn't charge Chelsea. Chelsea self report themselves, you know, by something that they see the new owners when they come in. You know, and I know that they um, they go to the expert and they sit and talk about it before they even um, to find out what will be the punishment before they even bring it up. So I don't think it's just something that they just bring up and report themselves because there's no way you're going to self-report yourself without finding out the, 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 the necessary details and see um, and know, you know, what can what can really happen, you know, with all of those a misread of the books and everything. So for me, that's not something I'm worrying about right now, to be quite honest. You know, as I'm saying, like the media, they uh, they have to have something to talk about. You know, so therefore, it's just it's just like Chelsea and Man City now, they can talk about those little topics, especially with Chelsea, because as I said, everyone been saying that Chelsea project, they never see nothing like this before and nothing like this never happened before. So a lot of people want to see the project fail because I talked to some Liverpool fan and some rival fan and what they were saying is 
because Chelsea go free flowing and spending a billion, they want the project to fail. Why do you want the project to fail? Because these owners just come and start to spend money left, right, and center. So they want it to fail. So that to show you that a lot of people in the media outlets, they, they want something to talk about, something to write about. So right now, for me, a lot of these things are coming out. It's not, it's not what it is. If Todd Bowler didn't come out and say that, oh, financial, we're okay, you know, because we do this or we do that, a lot of people were still saying that Chelsea was was in financial problem. You know, notice that it goes silent on that side. And now people are saying that, oh, I think it's close. Like first they were saying that we short of 150 million. And now we got um the, the it, it we got the um the Louis All money, you know, activate. That's 24, 24 million overall, 30 mil, 30 something million. That activate, you know, plus that the plus the the, the money for the for the hotels that the, the club buy. That's a hundred million, you know. So we we're, we're now getting um Ian Maxson, Maxson. I know he's balling out over there. So I know people are gonna look to sign him because he's doing good over there. That's another thirty five million dollars. So that to show you that a lot of these people don't know what they're talking about. They want to rot up all the Chelsea fan. You know, because once you write it, write it up the fans and the fans are unsettled or concerned, then you can push your narrative. And that's what I think most of these um, most of these uh, these these rivals are doing is pushing narratives. So I'm not following the narrative right now. You know, I'm staying calm, you know, and I'm just watching and see, you know, what what's going to become at the end of the season. But for me. It's not even about the end of the season. It's about next season, you know, to see how my team started and see how we can uh, uh, be consistent. That's my biggest. That's my biggest issue right now. That is true. Spot on, sir. Spot on. That's that's my whole approach for next season. To be consistent and get results. I don't care who we buy. I don't care where, who we get from academy graduate. I don't, as long as we get results and be consistent and we turn up every game, we'll be all right. That's what I want. You know, next season. Yes, I, I'm. Some people will be like, you know, there'll be project next. I don't want to hear project next season. I don't want to hear project. Maybe if they would be project, but I don't want to hear um, we we sign players cause of project. No, no, I don't want no sir. I don't <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear oh uh, have a bad season because of project again. No, nah, no, no. Maybe something. Let's do something different. I think the owners need to give the manager his own decisions to do like. What he wants to implement next season, like what he wants to do, which type of players he wants. I think the owners need to come into that accountability to allow the manager to get what he wants, to do what he wants, you know, what players he wants, you know, how he wants to play the system, how, you know, all those things are important. So if if they do get that sort of communication right, then I'm sure we'll be all right in the next future. But yeah. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. You know, um, we're not gonna send none of these players to be quite honest, rich money maker. All of these players are here to stay. No. If if, if what is um to be honest, you know, um, I think these owners are trying to build something, you know, if what they're saying is true, to be consistent, to be winning on a consistent basis. So they buy all these young players so they can grow together. You know, I think I know that better days are coming. You know, it's just us to, to get the formula right. You know, and better days will will be will be right there at our feet. You know, and then at the end of the day, we as Chelsea fans can sit back and and drink a beer or two and smile and say, you know, our team is looking good. Because remember, Roman Abramovich did do what um, what these new owners are doing because we did buy the best young players across the world, but. The reason why this this project failed for us with Roman 
we just hired, we just have the wrong managers that didn't know how to bring in young players. You can remember Kevin De Bruyne, um, Roman Lukaku, you know, um, Coltois. If you notice, like Roman Abramovich did do this, but people just don't see it because people are are blind to the to, to the past. They just want to see only the, the future. But if you go back, like we did buy all these Mo Salah, you know, this Asuka, notice we did buy a bunch of young players. Like Roman Abramovich did do everything right now. A Chori, you know, um, Bo, Bo, um I can't even remember his name. Let's say he's one of the best um, uh, players that we have when we sell him. Um, bro, uh, I can't remember his name right now. Boga. You know? Oh, Broha. Yeah, yeah bro. Broha. Mus Musala. You know, um, uh, this other kid, the Gail, Gail Kakuta. You know what they're saying? Oh, Kakuta, the yes. And, and Kakuta. Then, um, that guy was at Aston Villa. <laughs> The guy was at Aston Villa that we get banned for, um, Chorare, when he was 14 years old, when we scoop him up, when he was the youngest player to ever play for his national team. Like, we did, we did, Chelsea did this before. So why people don't see it? People people got short-term memory. You know, people don't attend to remember these, these, these things. I'm going to do a video about that, too, as you're talking about it. I'm going to do it in a video. But we did yeah, do all of this. You actually need to do that video. That we, because we, we, yo, we had so many stars. So like especially Kakuta, like when I was like we had so many good players. And like you said, like it's just that we had bad managers around these good players. Yeah. Even um Vander Vander um the same time with even Vander some there was a midfielder and he got that bad knee injury and he just never recovered. Like we did, we did buy all these uh these good young players. Like we did. It's not like we didn't. We did buy a, a lot of good young players. People just attend not to not to really focus and go back to history. You know, history, 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 history is something that can rewrite, man. History is history. And the history was it was there. We buy all the best young players across the world. We did this before. But we just didn't have the manager just to take that, just to just to gradually bring them into the squad. Like we just didn't, you know. And that 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 that's sad because a lot of these young players that that go on to be something good. Kevin De Bruyne, you know, he go on to be a world beater. You know, Mo Salah go on to be one of the best in the world. And remember that that goalkeeper that Liverpool got. We get a chance to buy Addison. And we delay, delay, delay till Liverpool come in and scoop him in after mm. after we get the chance to sign him. So we get the chance to sign a lot of top players, but we didn't, we did not, you know, capitalize on the on the um on the on, on, on it. You know, so it's so it's not like we, we we did we didn't we didn't do it. We did. You know, it's just unfortunate that um that we were we, we were getting managers that that just want to just only win today but we could we could do we could win today you know so for me you know we definitely have to look back to the, to to all these players that we 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 were we are about to sign or could have signed for less money we could have get Addison for 40 million dollars and then we delay because and we end up we end up with Kappa, you know so, so check it because we're trying to flirt with Tiba, with Tiba Kotwa. The day that Tiba Kotwa say he didn't want to be here no more, we sh and we talked to Addison, we should have just go straight in, you know, and go grab him. But what we did, we tried, we tried to convince Kotwa to stay. And you know, once he once he didn't come off holiday, that to show you that he didn't want to come back here. So we did get a chance to sign all of those players. You know, the the Asuka was here. Name it. The Kennedy. Kennedy was a world beater in Brazil. When we get him, True. we just didn't lose it properly. Yeah. No. Kennedy, especially. Yo, Kennedy. Like, I, I don't understand why I bought him. And he was a good player. Like, we didn't use him properly, man. And the thing, Yo, with, um, the thing with Kappa and Lukaku, if we don't sell Lukaku for at least... 
um, for, uh, forty million dollars, we're gonna be losing profit from him. Yeah, and too much. the same way too. We have to sell Kepa for at least a twenty million dollars. Twenty million get, in profit. Because we got Kepa for seventy mil. That's like expensive for a goalkeeper. And we got Lukaku for ninety to a hundred. So if we can sell this guys like right about uh thirty, forty million, we can make a little bit of profit from this guys. And that's that's true. Like we need players that at least play um play hundred game before because we need we need all of those um all of those factors. That's what that's what's gonna help us across the line. We're gonna definitely need um players with experience, you know, players that we um that we know can stay at least stay fit. You know, because none of these players right now prove to me that they can they can go a full season. You know, it's unfortunate. All the players that injure right now, for me, I would write them off for the rest of the season, tell them to go on holiday and come back to preseason early. To be quite honest, the Christopher and Cuckoo, all of them. I know that some of them want to make the Europe the European theme for their country, but I would tell them straight up, like go on, go on vacation and come back. You know, like your season's over, just like what I did with Lavia. You know, I would just write them off. The Reese James, all of them. Like, get all the rest that you need to, to come back stronger from your injury. Like, you know, your season is done and over with. The Fafana, all of them. I would write them off right now. To be quite honest, there is our problem. So injury is your, it's our main issue in this football club. It's our main issue. Yeah, like um, it's it's sad to say, man, but um, it's it's just the reality, you know. Like we we definitely um. We definitely, we definitely have to find a way, you know, how, how to really, really get, get, get this right. You know, we have to get it right. But Marin, I know it's late over there, bro. You know, I really appreciate you, man. And I know you say you're busy at work. You know, I don't want to keep you too longer. You know, I don't know. Any last words? Yeah, please, guys, please like, subscribe. If you guys want to share the content, please share. Please get people to come in. Like, yo, guys, we really get, you know, speak about real stuff. So, yeah, please, guys, if it's your first time, please subscribe to my brother Gavin's channel, please. It will help him a lot, help us a lot grow. Yeah, that's my last words. Sir. Anything from you, sir? Yeah, I want to say, you know, um, just keep the faith, you know, and um, just keep the link, man. When you're busy, let me know you're busy because, you know, when I don't hear from you, I work and you know you're always here. So, you know, I, to make sure that we, you know, keep the connection going. Man. But I really appreciate every time, you know, you come on the channel, all the support, you know, um, I really appreciate it. And all the Chelsea fans out there, man, just stay, just stay patient. You know, and just we just hope and pray for the best. You know that we have to know that better days are coming. You know, and as Rich Money Maker said, hit the like button. You know, just take a second. And Rich Money Maker, you know, one day, man, bro, I'm gonna have probably for Christmas. I'm gonna have to mail you a one of those Chelsea jersey kit, you and Marin, because. You know, you guys are always here. So just let me know what, sh what shirt size. For real, we'll let you know. Bro. We'll let you know. But, like, the more important thing is to bring people here, like, like you know, so that people can know, you know the type of conversations. Chelsea deeply as well, football deeply, you know. <laughs> like, that's what I want. I like, I want people to be here, man, like just brings people together so yes yeah man the beautiful game man the beautiful game is what bring us together it's bring us joy man joy you know um as i said man rich money maker and um i i got a story man like you guys don't know man where i'm from in jamaica man is a is one of the community where it's violence 
you know, and I got a lot of friends that I really grew up with. And, you know, the game saved me, to be quite honest, because when my friends used to go on or go out and uh, I know most of them die anyway, so they, they ain't going to hold me to this. But, um, you know, when they go out to go on robbery and stuff like that, I always choose to go play play the game, you know, and um, a lot of times I've been playing the game and I heard someone told me that, you know, the cops went went with this person, you know, or, you know, someone shoot this person. And I was like, oh, you know, we, we were just right here, you know, and and I'm just never the type of person that to follow, you know. I'm the type of person that's just always want to go to the to the field and play, you know. And that's when I fall in love with the game, you know. And from then on, you know, that I just realized that this thing just saved my life. Because if it wasn't for it, probably I would be one of those kids that follow my friends, you know. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you're always trying to follow your friends. You know, and I just never follow. I just always stop to play the game because the game always been playing in the community that I'm from. You know, so I've just always been there playing and stay and stay and stay where the game is. And all of my friends that always call me to follow them to go wherever they're going, you know, sometimes some they come back, sometimes some don't. So, you know, yeah. just being stuff like that. So. For me, man, I just love the game overall. I watch, it doesn't matter with the league, as long as Chelsea's looking on a player or even not looking on a player, as long as the game is good, I'm going to watch it, you know, because that's what keeps me out of trouble as a kid growing up. You know, I could have been on the wrong side, but because of the game, I stay on the right side. You know, I don't smoke. I never used to drink, you know, because of the, because by playing the game, I used to have to do job tests and stuff like that, so... I never oh. smoke and none, nothing like that. So this game helped me a lot in my in my life, you know. And this is a story that uh, that I know I I can share because you know you never know who it can help. But you know, just choose what you love and stick to it. You know, mm. as long as it's something good and positive, just keep on doing the work. You know, one day it will pay off because those trophy behind me is some of is some of some just some of what I I, I achieved you know, by sticking to what I love and do what I love, you know, so I would, I would, I tell everyone, man, in life, man, like, just love whatever, whatever pays you, you know, or whatever put food on the table for your family or whatever give you an opportunity to better yourself in life, you know, as long as it's not nothing that's breaking the law, you know, it's something within the law, you know, as long as it's, it's something that's going to uplift you to better yourself, better your, 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 um, your generation, your, your seeds that you plant, man, go for it, you know, because mm. it goes a long way, you know. Wow. So yo, sorry to hear that. So, yo, that was so deep. That's inspiration. Yeah, man, um, I'm going to say something, bro. Like, you know, you ever been on the phone with a person, like your friend, like my friend that I grew up with, childhood friend, because I was playing soccer, so they never used, they don't see me for years, but they normally you would have called me because I'm always trained like in the morning, from 6 a.m. in the morning, then I go home and take me a rest by 4 p.m. in the evening after I went out again to train again. So I never really like see my friends like that anymore. You know, on, on the weekends, because when you're in, in Jamaica, is you just play, play, play every day, you know. And for me, like, I go one day and I was like, you know, I was there, you know, my friend called me and we were on the phone and he was running. So I was like, what are you running to? And he was like saying, like, you know, we got in some trouble and, you know, like, so, like he was in a gang to what he was trying to say. And, you know, um, the phone just go dead, dead, dead on me. Like, I can't hear him no more. So I was like there and I was like, you know, um, it seems like his battery died or something. Like a couple of days after my cousin, my cousin called me and said, you don't hear what happened. I was like, no. As I'm just caught up in my own world when I was playing the game, to be quite honest. You know, I was just focusing on, on the game. I wasn't like all over the place with my friends anymore because that was that was when I was a kid. You know, yeah. so my cousin called me and told me that he died. And I'm like, oh, he died. He died. Like, you know, they, they kill him. And I'm like, what? And so the same time when we were on the phone, that's when it was happening. The phone just go dead on me, you know, so... Stuff like that kind of let me realize and I always trying to give positive talk, you know, in real life to people like, 
do what do what's best for you, man. Always, you know, like sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, but you know, just follow your heart and then always trying to do good because once you do good, good will follow, you know. That's all I have to say today. You know, and uh rich money maker and big up yourself, bro. Oh, big up, yo! That's so inspirational, yeah. sir. Damn, that's yeah. yo. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm man, sorry it's... to hear what happened, sir. So, yo, really. Oh, for me, you sorry, know, man. it's really it's it's good for me in a way now because sitting down, you know, I, I can all these those things that I see in life and I experience, you know, I can share with others, you know, I can share with kids, you know younger kids and let them know like you know life there's so much in life you know you can achieve so much you know you 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 can be the one that that change a whole entire generation you know you never can tell you can get up tomorrow morning you know by doing a few little by doing few little things and do being doing good you can end up be a billionaire and that can strengthen your generation you know for the rest the rest of their life you know so there's many many things to life you know, so for me, man, I always just I always consider life is special, you know. So just keep on doing what you're doing, you know, keep on holding your head down, work hard, you know, one day you will achieve your goal, long as you long as you believe, you know, and continue to go. That's true. I guess we have a Jesus follower here, so eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a true believer, man. You never see. I you am always, too. Yeah. You always see I wear my hat. That said, that said, Jesus is the, is my boss. You know, I, I got <laughs> the real them that I always wear on the show. You know, it's it's just good to know that you know that we can we can talk. You know, it's not only about football, but about life in general. You know, so thank you guys for being here. You know, and much respect, Rich Money Maker. Tomorrow, if I leave work early, I'm. Or if I leave work late, I will be here after the game, you know, and try to do a do, do a little preview show. You know, I know Rich Money Maker gonna be here, Marine, but I I know you're busy. So if you can be here tomorrow, just be here. You know, I really appreciate I'll, you guys. I'll I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm gonna leave uh, you guys. I'm gonna leave you guys with my son. Oh, that's when, uh, oh, okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What you were saying? No, 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 no. You can go ahead. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. So um, you guys, um, thank you so much. I'm leaving with my son. My son, music. Coming from a bad place. Oh yeah. Trying to be a better me just for you. But it ain't easy. It's hard to get used to. Money, my own business. I'm not worried about what he do. Cause nowadays all the niggas that be see through. I always said this is that I'm staying around people. Finding my own path like I'm riding my own sequel. Two faced people all around, they be evil. 2021, you can never trust nobody. Good and bad thoughts on my mind, they be crowded. Wishing they get past his limits, then you see he bought it. Family work hard, but I never catch him frowning. Came a long way in my dream, now I be drowning. Niggas stay dying, I hear got some hearts pounded. Multi talented, my passion, I haven't found it. Yeah, in my home, I was never ever doubted. Yeah, but that's 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 it, bro. Coming from a bad place, oh yeah. Trying to be a better me just for you. 